Hello, everybody. Oh, I, forgot, I forgot to open it. Get started over soon. Our Mikeys oh, are up. Our this. Mikeys are up and at them. Mikeys are ups. I saw that you watch Dune. I watch Dune. You, you like Dune? I like, like, a, I like the Dune. Dune. Then he knows what he's doing. Yes, it was a good time. He, knows, he, he, he be cooking. Yes, I let him cook, in fact. Are you proud of me for letting you guys talk about movies at the start of Bombcast and I didn't say that movies were mid? Yeah, that was big of I you. I almost yeah. did mid. Oh, I know, it was close. It's I know. Job on you. Yeah, it was hard. It's, job on you. <laughs> it's hard when other people are show you shit you are not into. I, I understand. <laughs> so I had to sit there and nod. Then they start talking about like a second movie. I was like, oh, no. Don't worry, you had your whole uh, Disney talk for like 10 minutes after the podcast was over. <laughs> that was good. Uh, okay. Uh, last couple things. I do want to watch my cousin Vinny. Test, test, test. Oh, it's so good. Test, test, test. Do you believe in the Lisa al now? I do. I always did, though. I believe in his power to get a bunch of rubes to fight for him. Am I right? Come on. No. I uh, cry when he gets the name. Uh, I, uh, have, uh Yavier Bardem... Uh, rules. Everything. Every time he's on he's screen, so I'm like, "Oh man, I missed you. I'm so glad you're back." I love him. Okay. Um, he's like a dad. Yeah. He's a new dad. Yeah, he's movie dad. Movie. Dune is Star movie. Wars for Tool fans. In Inufe, that is incredible. That's so correct. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I am mostly good over here. There's our cams. There's our Mikey. Our mics are looking good. I'll turn off the music here in a second. We'll test that what music. Let's say, do that Mike? now. What's going on? I miss. What? what do you? What do you do? Why huh? somebody in chat say Mike said a slur? <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. No, no, no he no. did not say a slur. I will defend this for the rest of my days. He sang a slur. Let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> Disney betrayed me. Disney betrayed in, me. In Mike's defense, he got tricked into singing. Oh, he's yeah. <laughs> me on. What movie did you sound? Can, do you, Jeff, can we, you know can we agree? The sound is bad? Can we agree it's Bailey's fault? Oh, of course. Of All course, right. it's the well, woman's are we fault. Mad at Bailey? I'll be mad yeah. at Bailey. I had to spend two a half hours believe? editing a podcast today because of Bailey. Sure. <laughs> Once again, a man getting canceled is actually a yeah. woman's fault. She, she brought you the apple of cancelization, and you took a bite. Wait, uh, what's your song? It was, it's, it's, from, yeah, it's from Hunchback. Oh, I know what you did now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm not about to rate slurs or anything. But I mean, come Mike on. Mike slur tier list, everybody. Tune in live at PAX. <laughs> well, he's defense. It wasn't a, nobody... Consider it like a slur back in the day, so yeah, this he allowed it. Recent <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I shouldn't have said it. I'm sorry. Let's, get, let's start the podcast. I am, hey. I think I'm, I think I'm ready actually. You guys heard the music, right? No, no, no. Hey, you guys hear me? Billy's Stop pretty bad at clapping, huh, Sean? Now. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, was, it was incredible because it was like. She just got bored in the five seconds until the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was editing ruled. the audio version because I missed the ending. And I'm I'm like listening to the ending. I'm like, I need to see the video. What the fuck happened for these like two <laughs> minutes right here? Uh, all right. In her, in her defense, I think she said she didn't sleep last night. And that you could tell by those claps. Uh, <laughs> all right. I think we are ready to go. Mikey, I'm going to count us in and start the music. We still you ready? hear the music, the music. by the way. Oh. You hey, should hear it now. You guys hear yep, me? Stop yeah. cheering now. All right. In five, four, three. Hey, you guys hear me? Stop cheering now. Yeah, yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> Woof, woof. Hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I am a Nintendo. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendo. And we are the last of the Nintendos. Today is Metroid bound to the World Video Game Hall of Fame. You know that thing. And Jeff and I get ready to take over Boston. Jeff, how, how are you doing? You getting any, any uh, pre-trip like anxiety or like overwhelmness? I get like, a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, I mean a little bit. It's mostly like 
Um, it's hard for me to imagine a world outside of the two day like radius that I'm in at any moment. So now that it's like Tuesday and I can visualize Thursday, it's like, oh yeah, I should have been doing all this stuff. So tonight I started doing laundry, got the suitcase out, um, got a bag out. That's about it. That's all I've done. But just getting the process started, I feel a lot better already. I'm like, oh yeah, this will be easy. I'll get this stuff taken care of. I'll probably We'll probably get done here tonight and I'll probably go make sure I have like the toiletries I don't need for the next couple of nights. I'll just put that in a bag. Just those will be my travel toiletries and that'll be taken care of. Just check off little things and I'll start uh, feeling pretty good about it. But mostly I'm excited. I'm ready to rock and roll and hang out in Boston with people. Yeah, I'm excited to be in Boston. I, I like have done nothing to prepare yet. So I get to do basically everything tomorrow. Take Penny to boarding and pack and do some laundry. So I will have things to wear there. So you know, so I, I do kind of just hate that. But uh, also, I don't like packy boring anyways, like toiletries. I don't have any toiletries I'm not using anyways until then. So I can't pack those till the last moment. Same thing with all the like electronic stuff or the CPAP, which is a whole thing. I can't pack the CPAP early, pack the CPAP early, pack the CPAP early. OK, we can do that. Um, but that's all right. We'll get it all done. We'll leave. I have to find out. I wonder what time am I flying Thursday? I, I don't even like look at that stuff till like 24 hours before. Yeah. I don't even like to think about it. I only look because Steph got back to me. She's like, when, when are you gone? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> she got very yeah. frustrated. Rightly so, because it's going to affect her way more than it affects me. Uh, so, yeah, I, I found out. I'm leaving pretty early in the morning. I, leave. I think I got to get out of here about like 7 a.m. on Thursday. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so my, my flight's at 6 a.m. So I'm going to be. Up very Yikey early Mikey. Thursday. That's fine. Yeah, that's all right. I like early flights. Uh, sure, yeah. I'll sleep on them. Yeah, it, it, early flights are you're, you're just on autopilot. You are just yeah. you just do the thing to get to the airport, and then you're on the plane, and then you arrive at your destination, and then that's basically when you're waking up for the day. So I, yeah, I like that. Yeah, uh, my dad has a real job. I'll have him call me to make sure I'm up. So <laughs> be, in case I try to sleep through my alarm or something. Doctor House calls. Yeah, Dell aboard the Red Wings. Call, I, yes, yeah. I'm turning off the Red Wings. I'm, I just can't handle it anymore. Uh, all right, Jeff. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, it's rough. You know, you, hey, hey, come on. You live in you live in Cleveland now. You should really get into the Guardians with me this year. Uh, yes, I, I I'll watch some Guardians games with you. We should go see a Cleveland Monsters game though. The uh, the minor yes, league absolutely. hockey team. That'd we be great. Absolutely. Yeah, we should see the Lake Erie Monsters. That would be fun. Yes. Um. Also, Jeff, I gotta I have to admit, not a ton going on in the Nintendo world this week. There there was something I wanted to talk about, and it completely slipped my mind because I'm a bad person with a bad brain. Um. God, I wanted to bring it up. Now I can't. I'll, I'll see. I'll see if something happens that, that, that jogs that loose. But um, yeah, yeah I, was, I definitely was like looking around, around. Like, yeah, there's there's not much happening in, in the in the news, Nintendo wise. I, I sp they're going to be at PAX. They did reveal that they're on the PAX show floor. Um, that there's no real reason to get excited about that. That's probably just going to be play their play our games that are already out for the most part, right? And then maybe uh, Princess Peach Showtime. Here's the demo that you can go download on your Switch. Right. They do that yeah, sort exactly. of thing at these showcases, right? Well, they had they already had like uh, some kind of Princess Peach Showtime booth thing somewhere, right? With a bunch of things people were standing next to. They probably had just shipped those to Boston, is what yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, that did just happen. That was in they they did a thing in uh, England. In foggy yeah. old London town, because I think I uh, think we are going to see those stand ups and whatever those were. You're probably right. You know, probably what they do is they probably don't ship those to Boston. When they have those things ordered, they probably just order two sets, and one goes mm -hmm. to Europe and one goes to America. So yeah, that's that probably make more sense. Probably actually. sitting here in America waiting for this very thing. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I. PAX show floors are not exactly where it's all happening. I'm glad. I mean, it's cool. I'm glad That's they exist. That's we saw Firefall. That's true. Yeah, Firefall. Um, I saw Blasphem Blasphemous and Blasphemous, Blasphemous 2. That's a hard word for me to say. Um, I saw those there and a couple other things. I've seen some cool things on PAX show floors. But mostly it's like meetings in hotel rooms if I want to see like a really cool game. I think I saw Streets of Rage 4 at a PAX. And was mm. just like, yep, that looks like my shit. I cannot wait to like really play that game. So, yeah, uh, I'm not taking a ton of meetings or anything like that. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a ton of announcements, uh, but you know, who knows? We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, you did mention at one point you kind of wanted to talk about the Persona stuff. Is that what you wanted to talk about? Eh, Persona 6 it. maybe being on Switch, too? I, I'm, I'm thinking it might, it might have been this PAX thing now that I'm thinking about it. Because it might have been like, oh, is there a chance that, like, with GDC happening, Nintendo starts talking to some people and maybe they start teasing some stuff uh, for the re rest of this year. 
Uh, but I'm, I'm like leaning against that. So it's like, eh, it was probably just half a thought anyhow. And that's why I didn't remember it. Uh, but yeah, Persona 6 probably coming to Switch uh, 2. Uh, it, that, that's the rumor right now. So it'll come to Xbox, Switch 2, PlayStation, probably all day and date if that's how it works out. Or at the very least, it'll come to Switch 2 later and very quickly later. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, does that surprise you at all? At this point, that's it's very quickly turned into the norm for Persona, right? Yeah, I mean, it, only in the sense that I mean, they were bad about getting Persona 5 and like even the old Personas on Switch for a long time. They had to like do three surveys to get there. I hope that they now finally see the light on that. I hope that they like like Persona 3 Reload should just be a Switch 2 launch game, right? Uh, just get that yeah. on there ASAP. I think the more platforms Persona is on, the better. There is clearly a giant audience of Switch fans who likes Persona and SMT. SMT5 was just a, a Switch exclusive for a while. So, like, they know there's a big audience for that there. So, yeah, if you have a Switch 2 and it is going to be easier to release these games on it, I think you just absolutely. <laughs> I think I wonder how many companies and for somebody like an house makes sense. You kind of develop for Switch 2 first and then you get it running on there and then you can bring it to the other consoles and hey, it's going to run even better on those. But I think you, like, do you start with Switch 2? And then kind of like add things for their consoles or you like start with yeah. the uh, home consoles and try to downgrade it to switch to right like which ways it go it depends on each game i guess yeah it's going to depend on each game and uh i think it's going to i don't know, i think the safe bet right now if you are making a game uh that is going to be multi-platform you probably do try to like, get that nintendo uh switch to dev kit and maybe aim at that because you know the evidence is if you get a successful game on switch it'll be successful everywhere and it could be very successful on switch so That'll probably carry over because the people that are most likely to get a Switch 2 at launch are the people who play a lot of games and buy a lot of games on Nintendo platforms. So, uh, I mean, that's there's a reason that Ubisoft was always there, even when that wasn't always the case. They tried to ride that early wave, and it usually worked out for them, at least for a game or two. Red Steel did great on the Wii. Red Steel 2 probably didn't do as well, but Red Steel 1 did right. great. I, the, the first Rapids game was a year one game, and that did really well. Right, and now the difference with the Switch is a lot of that momentum does carry forward. Eventually, there's going to be, like there is on the Switch, 16 17 000 games on there and you're just going to get drowned out but getting in there early in that first year is kind of a, a, a it's going to multiply your chances for a, a major success by a lot i mean just think about all those really i mean a lot of indie games they won't switch but if you were an early indie game even like things like you know it's not that they aren't amazing games but things like snake pass and golf story um in, in the yoko island express like they did very well just because they were good indie games on the switch very early yes uh right and there's the ones that i just yeah associate with i mean golf story is a weird one that never ever came out to steam that's right. so I mean, strange at a certain point why not and i just think uh, it's I, a, I think the reason is they just sold enough on switch that they didn't need to so yeah uh, i think they're like that's how much uh the, the switch can power a really successful indie game like that and i you know like Hades probably made enough money on Switch that they would have been fine, but they that's a team that had a lot of experience putting games out elsewhere, so that was no problem for them. Uh, but there was a reason they prioritized the Switch in such a way, and they, they did, and that paid off. All right, Jeff, so this World Video Game Hall of Fame, if you ever hear about the Video Game Hall of Fame, this is what they are talking about. This is based in the No, they're strong... talking about our Hall of Fame, and then the oh, other one should... is this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is based in the Strong and National Museum of Play, uh, in Rochester, New York. They've been doing this uh, since 2015. We uh, This year's nominees have been um, brought down to just a few. Uh, here are the contenders. There's one Nintendo game, and it is the original Metroid. The other ones, Asteroids, the original Elite, Guitar Hero, Mist, Neopets, Resident Evil, SimCity, Toki Meki Memorial, Ultima, and you don't know Jack. Uh, there is fan voting, and there's also a panel. Somehow they take those votes, and they're going to pick four of these if going based off of uh, previous years. Uh, I'm not sure if it has to be four, but it has been four before. Uh, Jeff, do you yeah. think Metroid has a good shot here? Uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you my four. I think. Yeah, give me your four out of these. Okay. Uh, you know, I th this is based on not having fully played all of these, but m most of them. Um, my four would be You Don't Know Jack. No, actually, I'm sorry. You Don't Know Jack, you're immediately getting cut. Uh, it's it's SimCity, <laughs> Sim Resident Evil, 
uh, Metroid, and Asteroids. Uh, that would be my four. Uh, that's my four. I realize oh. that's not going to be the four. I thought I left this one off by accident, and I did. Uh, yeah, I think you might want to readjust that, Jeff. Uh, Tony Ox Pro Skater is also on. Oh, what the fuck, year. Mike? So all right. My bad. My Damn bad. it. Now I got to cut again. one. Uh, yeah. All right. So then Tony Ox Pro Skater, SimCity, Resident Evil, uh, and then Metroid. Sorry, Asteroids. Asteroids is really good, though. Uh, but yeah. I mean, is there a part of you that's like, you know, we could just go straight to Super Metroid? But like, I get it. It's Metroid. It's very important. But like, part of me is like, yeah, hey, I like Metroid also. I mean, a but, lot of it was there. It just right. became a lot better and more playable and more friendly with Super Metroid and kind of better in every way. Like the presentation was better. The uh, in-game storytelling was better. The, the the weapons were better. Just you had more buttons. Uh, but Metroid is still basically the same game as Super Metroid. So I, I get it. Do you know what Tokimeki Memorial is? Uh, probably some porn game. It's the original Honey Pop, I bet. Well, yeah, kind of. It's like a very early dating sim, I think, actually. So, oh, really? <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think you, you were not uh, that far off, actually. What do you think about Neopets being on this list? I feel like if I were to say anything negative about that, that would be uh, misogynistic against women. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it was actually just a whole. I think it's more of a generational thing. Like even people just a little bit younger than me. Loved Neopets yes. of all types. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I know it's. I know it was very, very popular. I think I might have gone to the website once to see what the, see what it was about, I, and what, then I got I scared if, and left. If it's like, hey, we have to have something represent browser games, then I guess I, maybe I'm an old man. I'm like, I don't know if we need anything to represent browser <laughs> games. Uh, I'm like, you know, we're still trying to get asteroids in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, this Hall, of, yeah, this Hall of Fame has some weirdness. Like last year's winners, the, the four that got in last year were Wii Sports, uh, Computer Space, The Last of Us, and Barbie Fashion Designer. Um, I, look, I don't. maybe this Barbie game is more important than I know. Maybe I just don't know about because I'm a guy who wasn't into Barbie. Uh, the Last of Us, I don't know if games that are 10 years old should be up for Hall of Fames. Uh, I don't yeah, want to like, my whole personality rolling my eyes at The Last of Us and everybody freaking out because somebody just made a video game that was like a prestige TV show. Yeah. Um, but come on, like we're putting it like it's like the newest game on this Hall of Fame. Uh, for a couple of years, Minecraft was also put into it a few years ago. Yeah, but Minecraft does feel like an institution where The Last of Us doesn't <laughs> yeah. uh, compare to that. Um, yeah, I mean, what is it in most professional sports? You have to be retired for five seasons. Uh, yeah, I, I there's think, usually something. The music ones are like that also. There's got to be like a good amount of time passing. Yeah, first I think, yeah album. music's a better example. I think music, you have to be like, it's got to be like 25 years since your first album or something like that. Right. 25 years maybe is a bit much for video games since it's so young, uh, but something closer to 15 years feels right. God, how long has it been since the last of us though? <laughs> has it been, right. uh, it's been, it, it was, was, so it was 2013, 2013. So okay. it was 10 Ele years when it years, got inducted yeah. last year. It was 2023 okay. when it got inducted. And I mean, you know, games last year that didn't make it, uh, wizardry, quake, golden eye, um, angry birds didn't quite make it. <laughs> That's funny. Or even, you know, the first modern warfare, uh, probably should be on there before the last of us. I don't yeah, know. I mean, again, be. there's, there's fan voting involved, right? Right. I, you know, Wizardry Wizardry should almost certainly be on there before most of these. I mean, that's the game that was inspired JRPGs right. across the board. Like, that's like, a hugely important game. Right, and Ultima's on the list this year, and it should probably also be on there. Yeah. But Wizardry even is a bit earlier than Ultima, I yes. believe. Right, that's, like, I uh, think that's right, yeah. Right. It Actually, it is, yeah. If, if you have a video game Hall of Fame that's been running for, like, almost nine years now and Wizardry isn't on it yet, I, I see that as a bit of a problem perhaps uh, i um, think i think if i'm looking at this list if i it yeah this is for me if tony hawk's pro skater doesn't make it that's the one i'd be like that's absurd uh that should of course be on there and then actually probably resident evil after that but you know that's a yeah. very core gamer coded thought but you know that that's how i feel about it yeah i see a bunch of games that should be in there i think my four would be my, my four most and i think a lot of these games should be on there yes agreed it's tony hawk's pro skater uh Resident Evil, then Metroid, uh, and then uh, my fourth one would be Mist. Actually, I yes, <laughs> Mist. Absolutely, it's funny trying to tell people, hey, Mist was like the biggest game in the world for a bit there. <laughs> this really, uh, we this really weird point and click adventure game thing that was really atmospheric and kind of weird. Uh, huge, huge deal for a hot second there. Speaking of which, I did announce that Riven remake today. 
Uh, I'm excited. I, I was. I, I think they've been talking about doing it, but it got really formally right. announced. That's great. I hope they do. I hope they do Mystery Exile at some point too. That one is was a higher fidelity game. Might be more difficult. I don't know, but we'll see. But uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm happy for you. I was never a miss guy. I mean, I like appreciated it from a distance. Um, but I think I was like, nah, it's I'm I'm good. I don't need some puzzle game for moms. I was very dismissive. I was a very shitty teenager. Yeah, wow, you're a bad person. Yeah, bad person. Bad Not person. Like me. No. All right, Jeff. <laughs> well, that's it for our little news segment here. Why don't we take a short break? We'll come back. We got some super chats. Let's fucking do it. Gonna get a drink. Yep, sounds good. All right. All right, everybody. All right, all right, all right. What shouldn't I forget? I got. Okay, Lisa you know what? Al-Gaib. Oh, did I already lose what? Jan's Chinese handheld? Shit, <laughs> what did I do with that? Bro, I thought it was right no, there. <laughs> you had one job. I have one job. Oh, no. Okay, we'll have to find that. I'm going to find that, and then we're going to... Oh, there it is. Okay. So I got this. I got to pack this, but I was going to make a video first, so I'll probably try to record that tomorrow. Uh, at least so I have the footage. Um, what else should I ha- make sure I don't forget for Boston? Bring Boston. Up, it's it's going to be very cold, so a lot of uh, warm clothes. Don't In forget... Boston? Yeah, Boston. Don't forget the Shit. Sagma, of course. Boston. I'm going to bring so much Sagma, don't worry. Oh, I get it. That's a thing. Yeah. I'm back. All right. Uh, Mikey, uh, whenever you're ready, I'm good. We're back, Jeff. Let's hear those super chats. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. Let's start with Fergus, uh, who says, Hey, I'm currently in Kyoto on my honeymoon with my wife. My oh, wife. Uh, and, her, and he actually put in parentheses my wife here. So he knows. Are there any demands you guys have for Shiggy and the crude, uh, crew I need to relay? Um, just like, just get in there and like find their like naughty and nice list and switch us on it. That's how <laughs> we get it. I need mean, some subterfuge. Actually. Yeah. Tell them we're yeah. very trustworthy and, uh, that it wasn't us. Someone else said how many catch. Bailey shines. made us do it. Yeah. But it was Bailey. Bailey did it. Ba- it was Bailey's fault. Hey, ha- uh, congratulations, uh, on the honeymoon, the marriage. Well done. Yeah, and that's uh, that's awesome. Your honeymoon in, in Kyoto. That sounds like a very good time. Enjoy yourself. Dan Rickards and oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say enjoy all the good food out there. Dan Rickards in chat saying, "Don't forget our switch and dock and pro control." You oh, travel shit, with yeah. your pro controller? Oh, you want, oh, if you needed me to bring, I can bring pro controller for sure. I was gonna bring like I'm gonna bring a a good controller instead of my oh, pro I'm controller. I'm supposed to bring my switch. <laughs> you guys should have told me that. No, no, not not you. Me. It, not me. Yes, Just you're good. You. You're good. Yes, we're, good. we're using two switches for the right, Dandoko Dare. For Dandoka. I thought he was just like as a basic necessity. I thought he was no, saying that. One's one's for him. One's where one's his. One the other one's mine. Uh, but there will be two teams, so we'll just use those two switches. So Penny, you want to come over here and show Dan that you're real? Where are you? Uh, uh, bring Penny, your pro. You're not control- helping my case. Yeah, but my pro, no, no, but Dan, my pro what? controller is the first generation pro controller with a bad D pad. It really. I have uh, an eight bit dough. I can bring two eight bit doughs. How about that? I'll bring both so they're equal. All right, they're the same exact thing. Yeah, everyone's gonna think Penny's really thick now. One, Where are you? Are um, those the one that you shake them up to to turn on the? Well, that's the that's there. There are eight bit dose like that. I won't be bringing those. I, I got like just the you know, the previous generation. Um, right. Dan, no, I, I'm telling you, my my pro controller is bad. It's a bad pro controller. It's the first well, gen. I'll bring where, my pro controller. Then. Yeah, Michael, bring his pro controller, and then we can use and that if, if I don't you forget. want. Yeah, I don't have a good pro controller. Uh, Big Fresh Thirty Seven says. Captain Toad. Mm. Let's go. Interesting. Is that, okay. Mm. D- are you getting any closer to actually playing Captain Toad? No. I am. <laughs> I Big go, Fresh, I'm very look, susceptible to these, so keep, keep, keep them coming. <laughs> keep going, but like I got a uh, look, I'm so very deep into Persona 3 right now. Uh, Willow Day. Yeah, they all have bad D pads, Sean. Mine is worse. That they got better than this at the very no, least. No, they didn't, because I have one of the late gen ones that were just exactly the same. Oh, oh that's tested. actually more depressing to hear. Okay, I mean, I'll I bring mine. Sorry, pretty, pretty good. It just does the, pretty nice. It has the worst false diagonals, is what the the problem is. It's just like you're you kind of can't like if you were to try to play contra, it would be impossible because you'd be constantly aiming in the wrong direction. Um, Willow Davis says Captain Toad's pleasure packer. <laughs> Thank you. Dor- Dorachi says Captain Toad's criminal record. Yeah. yeah. Kind of can't travel internationally without running into a few cops here and there. Uh, Power Glover says, yes, this is my real name. Love you, boys. Woof, woof. Power- what do you mean? 
Power Glover is your real name. It's you his mean Christian like your name. Like your birth certificate name is Power Glover? Government name, Power Glover. Was your name originally Turok at some point? Are, are you the Turok? Are you related to Crispin Glover? <laughs> oh! Remember he was in that weird movie with like where he had an army of mice and he killed people with his mice army? Nope, you made that up. No, that's real. That's a real Crispin Glover movie. Nope. I don't believe that. Yeah. That doesn't sound right. I do, I do remember when he did Acid on Dave Letterman. Uh, when, yeah, and, well, y'all remember that. Yeah, except for like a him. year on YouTube. I couldn't go on YouTube without them like being like, you want to watch this time that he was on Acid on Letterman? I'm like, I've seen it. You don't. You can stop recommending it to me, please. Uh, EP Idiot Box says, okay, Mike, Mount Rushmore of slurs and <laughs> go. <laughs> uh, am I allowed to say the Italian one? Sure, yes. No. Yeah, he's, a, he's, not, he's Italian. Yeah, right. uh, they go. <laughs> There's other Italian ones. Do you need me to say them? <laughs> no, <laughs> I would rather you not. <laughs> R Truth says, "Hey, Uncle Fester and Lurch, what's hey. up? Congrats on your world record for binge watching Myth Mythbusters. I knew you could do it. Thank you, R Truth. Uh, you're you're on. So I'm Lurch. All right, I'll take that. That's fine. Um, Ali Miracle says, "Listen, I blame Disney and women." myself for all mistakes and mishaps sorry mikey oh, thank you for apo for your apology Alan miracle yeah i appreciate that it's I mean, about time more. someone stepped up and did that yeah. uh adam gc said for the lake erie monsters ref or yeah for the lake erie monsters reference love a good ahl poll absolutely i think about them a lot i'm like oh i should get over there it's a good uh team name uh, David, oh, I lost it. David Pedal says, I had a dream there was a Nintendo Direct, but all they announced were 3DS ports and something called New Super Mario Brothers U Sunshine. Oh, uh, I guess that's one way to make New Super Mario Brothers better. It's just a bunch of tropical themed levels. I bet if you, if you did some flood stuff in a 2D game, that'd actually be pretty fun. Yeah, I think, I, honestly, if they announced something called New Super Mario Brothers U Sunshine, and it's what I'm imagining... Just sunshine style tropical levels with the flood and uh, yes and and honestly that kind of control uh, the Mario's move set from sunshine in a two D game that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. because up. L Grug says so. When will Switch to GDC leaks? Go, or, or when are they going to happen? And why isn't Christian talking more about Fatal Fury: City of the Wolves? Yeah, that shit rules. It looks. It doesn't look ugly like the other SNK games they've been releasing lately. So I'm, uh, I'm very happy about. I thought that. it. Yeah, I thought it, thought it looked real nice. It looks like yeah, really it looks, pleasant. Yeah, it, yeah, it looks really good. They I need to see that pirate lady still. Jay sure. Bennett oh, yeah, or was it? Yeah, Jay Bennett. Yes, she looks cool. Be Jenny. Be close, Be Jenny. close. Oh, Be yeah. Jenny. Um. Well, yeah, we're very excited. El Grug, I, I wouldn't be like super surprised if there were switch to gdc leaks but i'm not expecting them they delayed it they're probably not gonna be bringing all the stuff to this gdc because they're they're you know pushing things way down the line uh daily beating says been playing final fantasy 7 rebirth and bellatro and i can't help but try to come up with how queen's blood could be a fun roguelike deck builder yeah, that'd be that could work. That'd be really fun. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of card games have those uh, sort of um, variants where you you have to uh, draft cards and you can do something with that. I, I wonder if we actually are getting a standalone Queen's Blood thing. I think it might be a distinct possibility. The reception to that has been very good. Right. Right now, the announcement, the news was that they were going to do a, maybe expansion packs within Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, right? They, they, start um, to, they talked a little bit I about that. I see that, but I believe you. Yeah. Um, so I think that that like leads in the one leads into the next thing. Uh, Tyler James Bay says Hellblade is better than Super Metroid. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's nah. just a lie. Yeah, it's nah, just not. Oh, right. I, man, I you know it's Super Metroid's 30th anniversary today. And that's so there, right today. So there's been that was probably actually what it was, Mike. That's what I wanted yeah, to talk about. You should probably bring that up actually. Um, and so I've been seeing a lot of footage of Super Metroid on my Twitter list today. And I, every time I see it, I'm like, God, this game. It just makes me so uh, happy to I look know. at it. It's just amazing. I, I do just get happy. Yeah, exactly. I get happy every time I see that game or hear that game. Uh, yeah, maybe I should play it tonight. Yeah, I'm just thinking the same thing. Who's up? Who do we, who's on the SNES teams for Dan Doko there? I wonder if they're going to have to do any Super Metroid stuff. I think it is Lucy on my team. And I think... I think it's Jan on your team. Okay. That sounds right. I see it. So then it, like it's it. Tam versus Bacalar in N64. Oh, it's Tam and Lucy, Dan says. Okay. All right. Well, he would know better than me. 
Uh, Steph Tindo says, any advice on how to make a career in gaming like you guys did? What was your career path? It seems like it's a small niche and everyone knows everyone. I've been working on video editing for myself. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows. We don't, we didn't all happen to each other. And for a long time, I especially felt like, wow, look at all these people who know everybody. They don't know who I am. And it wasn't like till a few years ago where suddenly they did know who I was. It, you know, it was a long process. Uh, Jeff and I both came up together, uh, kind of doing our, our, our own small side projects. Then eventually we, we were both um, unpaid interns at a startup site called BitMob, which was run by ex EGM people like Dan Shu. Then that got bought by VentureBeat, where Jeff and I worked for a long time together. I'm still there. So, you know, certain things, it doesn't necessarily work that way anymore with like unpaid internships. Um, you know, me having this same job, the same website for a long time is itself kind of uh, uncommon. But, you know, Jeff, you give this advice all the time, like find the other people who are starting out like you. Like, don't necessarily worry about trying to get in with the people you see right now. Like when I started, yeah, the people I thought I wanted to get in with aren't in the industry anymore. Right. Because that was one generation ago. You kind of have to look around at the people who are in your position and try to do stuff with them. Yep. That's the thing that works the best. Um you know, you're going to become the average of the people around you. So put the people around you that you think are going to do good, good things. I mean, that's what I, that's why I did. I mean, I'm like Bitmob and hang out with Mike and, you know, people like Chris person and stuff like that. I mean, I, you know, they were on the message boards, they were writing blogs on one up and it's like, oh yeah, let's just do stuff together. And eventually, you know, it doesn't always work out. There are plenty of people who are trying to do this, who went on and do other things. Um, but it doesn't, it does increase your chances. So, uh, yeah. And then if you're like, where, do, like, where do I start doing that? Um, you know, Lexi's doing stuff at it, it's, it's pressstart.co.uk. I always want to say start menu, but that's a different thing. Pressstart.co.uk. Maybe go hook up with, with Lexi or, you know, Dalibor was in chat. He does stuff over at side questing with like new, new people in the industry. These are good ways to get started. Uh, but yeah, just start working on stuff. And eventually if you get, you know, someone goes, goes ahead and they get, to, they get a job, they'll remember, Hey, I worked with you and you were good at it. So I need help. When I need help, I know who to go to and it's you. It's kind of where you want to be. Uh, from burrito. Hey dogs, since we're on controllers, do you know of any good re of any good recommendations for a PS5 third party controller that is also Xbox one shaped slash mapped? I'm making up for the week. I lost my debit card. Thank you so much burrito for that. I appreciate it. Um, I feel like those exist, but I, I mean, I, nothing's coming to mind. I don't need that. Like I, I could switch them back and forth between the controllers when I'm on the different systems. I don't like oh, these analog sticks are in the wrong place now. It's like, no, this is where they're supposed to be on a PlayStation controller, but I'm sure that exists. Um, Let's see. Epic Wallpaper says, playing Shipwrecked 64 Soul. Also, hi, Mikey. I love you. What's Shipwrecked? Oh, thank you. I love you, too. What's Shipwrecked 64? I feel like that's got to be like a Super Mario 64 mod or something. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't um, know much about it. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up, though. And then Ecto Coolest says, best mini game of all time. Oh, I mean, Queen's Blood is up there. And then, of course, there's the other all-time great Final Fantasy card game, Triple Triad from Final Fantasy VIII, also in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, gosh, other ones. Was, uh, the original Geometry Wars, wasn't that like a, a mini game inside of a Namco racer or something? Yeah. Something not, like, not exactly what it was, but something like that. Yeah, but Project Gotham or something. Yeah, yeah. something like um, that, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Uh, there, what, what, what's, the, what's the one for Pokemon Samer one likes? Magic Carp Splash. There's probably one people liked more than that one, <laughs> uh, actually. It was uh, Project Gotham. Um, oh, monkey go around. There so you go. go around rules in Pokemon Stadium. Uh, that doodle monkey jump target. thing from oh, monkey targets. Good. Uh, the doodle jump thing from the loading screen on Splatoon. Um, yeah, there's some good ones. Oh, Pazox a good I, one, Spencer. I like Wakamonte from uh, uh, New Super Mario Bros. and DS. That's pretty funny. Oh, the, oh, the Chow the Garden one. from the first two Sonic Adventure games. Chow Garden was awesome. Those is that the one you can play on the VMU? You could put your chows in the VMU and like do some stuff with them there also. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so that, by the way, going back a couple, uh, that was Steph Tendo's 20th super chat. So thank you so much. Thank Steph you, Steph Tendo. Tendo. That's awesome. Uh, but that does it for the super chats for now, Mikey. Uh, if we get any more, we'll read them before the end of the program though. Right. Well, let's uh, take one more little break here. Uh, we'll come back. We got some uh, questions from our community over on discord and Patreon. Let's go. Hey, uh, hey, Jeff. Yeah. 
It's start menu. Oh, fuck. I always mess up. <laughs> Jesus. You always get I always that. mix it up. Man. No. We'll let you fix that while we come back in. Then. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good. I wasn't sure either. I was afraid to say anything. I just worked myself into a like, shoot with it, like where I'm like, oh, I, I, the thing I'm thinking of must be wrong because I'm always wrong about it. All right. All right. We ready? Yep. Go. Yeah. All right, Jeff. We're back. Is there anything you want to say for yourself? So I've already forgot. It's it's start menu, right? Startmenu.co.uk. That's what it was. I got it wrong, everybody. It's not pressstart.co.uk. Yeah, that's that. Yes, that's that's Lexi's site, everybody. Yes, we start menu. That. Especially if you're starting out, it is a good place. To go. Yes. Um, all right, Jeff, we got a bunch of uh, comments and questions from our community. You ready for this? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, real quick. I, mean, I know we got a yeah. lot of questions to get to. You ever see this Noah movie? Noah? Like the guy with the boat? Yeah, the guy with the boat. The one with Russell Crowe. That was made Russell like a Crow? movie in the theaters. What? Yeah, it was made he a long time ago. Sucks. I, I think about it all the time. Apparently, it's like having a big comeback because it's on Netflix right now and everybody's real crazy about Noah. I'm like, like okay. ironically, I don't know if it's ironic because I th I think the movie's kind of like really interesting in a weird way. Like you know, it, it's one of those ones where it's like, no, the the angels are like giant rock mud monsters yes. that come out of the ground and help people and help Noah. I'm like, oh okay, this this is so this is like some fucked up shit. I like it. Yeah, man, Noah's so family sure like, looks. What if the Bible was real type deal. No, his family sure does look very Anglican in this movie. <laughs> Russell, Russell Crowe from the Middle East, you know. It was uh, Aronofsky? Who yeah, did this? it was Darren Aronofsky, yes. It's uh, okay. listen, it's it's worth watching. It's interesting. I uh, I don't okay. know if it's good, but it's yeah, interesting. Sure. It's not good. But yeah, it's it is interesting. Ben JC says, hey, dogs, this Saturday is my three-year game is anniversary. No question. Just want to say much love to you in the community. Thank you so much, Bench JC. Thank you so Appreciate much, Bench. all of your support for the last three years. Thank you. Thank you. Then Domino Crossing says, happy 30th anniversary to Super Metroid Dogs. Jeff, we uh, think over on Game as a Sides, we had a thing where we tried to decide the greatest video game of all time. And I think we decided it was Super Metroid. Yes, we did. Uh, and I feel gosh. good about that. Yeah, yeah, 30 years. That's pretty incredible it's good to know that we still you know we got a metroid dread not long ago uh metroid prime 4 is on the way there is still fun metroid stuff happening makes me happy this is uh, yeah. gonna, always going to be this one of my cover favorite art rules it's so God, good samus is well, awesome and it's real because like the long boy version of it like the tall boy i should say where you get like the full crate is also fantastic and yeah, it still also works here yep. this horizontal layout uh Oh, man, that, that only force symbol that they had for uh -huh. SNES was weird for a while. There was made of goo for some reason. Right. They they didn't use that for very long, right? That cause they, there was like a more in your face, like play it loud version that they did later. Yeah, I, I think so, man. Ah, oh, God, I want to play Super Metroid. All right, thank you for bringing up Super Metroid. Every time that happens, I'm happy. Uh Hot Pork Summer says, dear, says, dear Niten Shitsus, it's cute. Uh, an evil genie curses you to get. Kid and King Arthur's courted, thank you, to one of the following worlds, Middle Earth or the Pirates of the Caribbean realm. Which do you think you'd fare better in? You have all the skills and powers you possess right now. Your co-host gets a uh, uh, Kid and King Arthur court to the world that you don't choose. Uh, well, I think I would, uh, would a million percent choose uh, Middle Earth. Uh, for one thing, I guess we there was a confirmed afterlife in Pirates of the Caribbean, but it seemed pretty miserable. Yeah, um, the afterlife in the middle. Earth like that's much how, you're, how you're prioritizing things of here. Course. Yeah, well, well yes, absolutely. The afterlife is forever. All right, you're right. You're right. Which, all right. Like, like if I'm being practical, which, uh, which one do I have an immortal soul? I think. <laughs> Uh, one million percent. Uh, like yeah, at Middle Earth, there is actually a, a a force of good that is overseeing things, and, uh, and actually, you know, they're both kind of like probably dirty and grimy in some ways uh but middle earth way less so than the pirates of the caribbean i'll get seasick too yeah i um i would also go with middle earth because i think like i'm imagining i always wanted to be a uh, strider not any of like the action or heroic stuff the sitting in the corner of a bar with a hood over my head uh drinking by myself while people think well that guy's mysterious that's neat and mm -hmm. you could do that in pirates of the caribbean you could but it seems more diseased. I don't know. There's something yeah. about it. I'm just like, no, I don't need scurvy. I don't need all this other stuff. So I'm going to go in the corner of this pub next to Hobbiton and hang out there instead. Yeah, there's give, no me, give me the uh, quest giver. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what Scream is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's no like real Shire equivalent in the. I mean, I guess the Pirates of the Caribbean world is also sort of just Earth, <laughs> right? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because like. Like when does that take place? Like you could just go to Detroit in the Pirates of the Caribbean universe. Like, yeah, it's like Detroit, a, Fort Detroit existed. They'd call it Detroit. Yeah, like, but that's like weird. 1600s, early 1700s. I yeah. don't know exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see here now. Tommy Petzl says, "Dear Mike, Sean Johnson fan plus plus hell yeah, Minotti. Oh yeah, Sean Johnson, good stuff. I'm on his Patreon now. He did a new video too long ago. I think he's working on an every Capcom game on PlayStation One video. I'm looking forward to that." And Jeff, I don't know who you give money to on Patreon Grub. Uh, I give it to like Imran Khan and a bunch of other people. I don't know. I think the only ones I give money to are Sean Johnson and uh, Fire Escape, actually. Uh, what would it take for Those someone to create... have a Patreon? They have a Patreon. I, yeah, I give people. Don't tell. Oh, Dan's on here anymore, but doesn't know I give him money. Uh, Is it because they talk about you? Yes. Of course. Uh, what would it take? I had. Oh, there's. The, I had to cancel it for a week though when Jeff, uh, Jeff was on instead of me. I'm yeah. Sorry. No, I get that. What would it take for someone to create a developer like Hamster and make an arcade archives version of PlayStation X or PlayStation PlayStation and Saturn games? I'd kill and pay for a way to easily access the game Sean talks about in the videos he makes. Well, I mean, for 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 Sean's games, PlayStation One emulation is very good. You could just get duck station i know what you mean it would be better to like like just have that stuff on s switch somehow but it's not really that easy it's not like just doing all these archive archives to be honest i don't quite understand the business of our arca arcade archives i don't understand how this one umbrella is able to bring back all these games from snk to even nintendo stuff right like they did donkey kong on there yeah, they, uh, I would be inter interested to understand the business behind that. You're right. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's it's not just as straightforward as that. Yeah, but, you know, PS1 games, uh, yeah, it's that's not... Duck Station is a very good emulator. Saturn emulation is obviously uh, a bit tougher, but it is getting better. Uh, I give on Patreon uh, to Player One Podcast, Kind of Funny Games, Panning the stream, although I don't, they don't charge me anymore because anymore, they stopped that podcast. Hi, Dan. Um, the film cast, Brad Shoemaker and Will Smith's Tech Pod, A More Civilized Age, Next Lander, and Highlight Reel. Oh, no, and Imran Khan. And then there's a bunch that like stopped charging me because they, they just stopped their Patreons. So, yeah. I I, uh, I give kind of funny money on Twitch instead. Yeah, <laughs> Kind works. of funny money. Funny money. Fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, Low Rule says, <laughs> if Nintendo has a May Switch 2 reveal, do they skip the E3 time frame? Maybe it's late enough to feel like it's a part of that summer game fest time frame. Yeah, I don't know, Jeff. What are you expecting in terms of timeline here? Is this uh, for the oh for the so Switch Two reveals that we're talking about? Like, yeah, like Switch when, Two reveal when that could happen. I mean, my gut tells me that we get after the summer, and then that's when they do it. Um, uh, they do it like later in this year, so September ish. Uh, I think is a possibility. I really don't know, though. I don't think there's anything set in stone. I think they have a pretty decent idea of when they could do it, but I bet they're not going to, like, uh, you know, uh, pin themselves down into any one thing. I think they want to remain flexible because that, it has enabled them to roll with the punches so far, so why not keep that up? Uh, and they have the internal teams to do these announcements whenever and however they want in relatively quick fashion. Obviously, there's going to be a big marketing campaign that starts up after that, uh, but that is something they would roll out probably after that initial announcement, probably a couple months after that. So I, if I had to, like, put money down on a board, I would put it down sometime in September. Bill and Max says, uh, what do you think the Switch 2 emulator will be called? Super Yuzu, Yuzu 2, Yuzu 2? <laughs> uh, I, I, do, I do love uh, Suyu. Uh, being the name of the one that's replaced Yuzu, that's like an incredible like play on words. Uh, so that one's taken. I, I think you just get away from Yuzu altogether. Uh, yeah, so you maybe, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know that uh, a Suyu guy is Argentinian? I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you see Bailey's but, tweet yeah, about how, really. like, this person's like, German is my love, love language, and I want to go to Argentina, and how those two things together are fine, but we, we, or when those things are separate, it's fine, but when you put them together, it mm -hmm. could be a problem. No, cool. Yep. No, nice. Yeah. Don't do that. Man, we're talking about Bailey a lot. God. She's great. <laughs> so Cryorsis says, hey, professional Mortal Kombat mythology speedrunner Mike Minotti and meditation guru Jeff Grubb, what are some things you're looking to catch up on after Dragon's Dogma 2 drops and the world finally has a minute to breathe? I still want to go and uh, play or finish Jedi Survivor and Final Fantasy 16. 
especially with that DLC coming out for 16. Um, I picked up Threads of Fate for the PlayStation 1 at my local video game store. Jeff, this is a sort of later Square Enix joint on PlayStation. It's kind of this cute little action RPG. I think I actually did get turned on to it by Sean Johnson. Talked about a lot of people specifically today. Uh, and that game looks super charming and super fun. I really want to play Threads of Fate at some point. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Jedi Survivor is also pretty high on my list to get back to. Um, I, I I don't know. I'm I'm playing a lot of old games like here or there sporadically right now. I think I am in the mood to like just go back and play some old stuff. Uh, but I, I uh, this time I'm going to try to be mindful about not just replaying like the comfort games. Going to try to go back to play some old games I've never played before. So that would probably put me in like early PS2, early PS1 stuff where I got the PS1 and the PS2 pretty late. So I missed out on a lot of those things. Uh, Dr. Lynch says, woof, woof, puppers. For those in school slash college, it's spring break season. Well, it's also a time for a number of religious holidays, too. Does this time of year still any nostalgia for any old games for you? If so, which ones? March always reminds me of the release of the original God of War and playing it with friends when I was finishing high school. I mean, not I'm trying to think. Not really. I mean, spring break. I. I went to college uh, in, a, in a very local place, and uh, Jeff didn't go to college, so spring break wasn't some crazy thing for me. I kind of just lounged around at home, which I assume would mean playing video games, but I don't know if anything stuck out as some special spring breaky thing. Yeah, not spring break necessarily, um, and really kind of not maybe in the spirit of this question, but the, the thing I do think about this time of year is Breath of the Wild, um, because oh, GD sure. GDC happened, I just had uh, Emmy, she was young, and uh, and everyone else was going. It was traveling, and I got to stay home and just play Breath of the Wild on my brand new Switch that Nintendo sent me. And it was, oh yeah, very memorable set of weeks there playing that nonstop. Um, and so yeah, I associate that with I associate that with everyone going to GDC is what I do. I did get Star Fox for Easter the year it came out. Like uh, me and my brother just got that instead of a bunch of candy. Yeah, we got candy too. Am I kidding? But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think about Star Fox like with Easter time. Stereotypically hot villain Eden says hi peaches and cream. Yeah. Who is your favorite purple themed video game? I love character? to wake um, off to Crystal. <laughs> she's blue. It's fine. She's blue. Uh I like I like purple tentacle from Day of the Tentacle a lot. Very good video game villain. Uh Ridley's blue and a uh, purple in a lot of things, right? Yeah, it was it Not was always wasn't uh, weren't they just purple on the cover of Super Metroid? Um, I guess we we're just looking at it and I already forgot. Uh my favorite is uh Grimace from the Ronald McDonald Treasure Game. Uh yeah. that's pretty high on the list for me. That sounds pretty good. I'm trying to think like what's the most iconic purple Pokemon and I th I thought I would have thought of one faster than this, to be honest, and I'm not Oh yeah, Waluigi, of course. Oh so Waluigi's also. purple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just that's you right. know Wearing purple clothes, but I guess that counts, right? That's what that's, that's what that means. Like they're up. Sure, I mean, so, you know, I mean, Mario's wearing you know red clothes, but right. yeah, Mario red, Luigi green, Muck you. How dare you bring up Muck? Ah, uh, <laughs> Ali Merritt Cerveza Cristal says evening Cerveza boy. Cerveza Cristal. <laughs> when do you think Enix Square is gonna, is going to realize being launch exclusive may not be the best for them in terms of those launch numbers? Atlas has Sega, Capcom, to name a few, seem to be eating the meal pretty well, given that PC launches tend to really uh, to do tend to do really well for these games as well. Yeah, I mean, it, that was clearly a strategy for a while. There was to take the PlayStation money specifically for Final Fantasy launches. Um, it, it seems like when they did the Final Fantasy VII remake deal, it was for all three games right away. And that's why we still haven't seen that uh, on any of the other uh, home consoles or anything. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they regret this deal. I don't know if they're thinking differently about that. I mean, look, you are getting money. Front, and I think and they're going to be able to command a lot more money, sales. right? Because, yeah. um, you know, Sony's pu publicly on the record on the record saying they don't have a ton of games this year and making games is becoming more difficult for them. So Square Enix is like, yo, you want a game? Fucking pay me. Uh, so they're going to be able to command even more money going forward. So I think they're probably going to be mostly fine with it. But there, you know, long term, is this hurting Final Fantasy? Is it making Final Fantasy less re relevant by not being on PC day and date, by even not being on Xbox, not being on Nintendo Switch? I mean, obviously, it'd have to be a different game, but maybe you need to make a different game then if you if you're missing out on Nintendo Switch. I I think this does long term not help Final Fantasy, and I think there's just uh, maybe a 
a small detrimental effect where it's like, yeah, people are just moving on from that and you're not rekindling uh, new people or g getting new people in. You are just rekindling old flames of people who used to like Final Fantasy are now coming back to it. So yeah, maybe. I think they'll they'll look back and be like, okay, we got a lot of money, but was that the right choice? I think they'll, they'll have a debate internally. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Ryan says, what game is the video game equivalent of Truck Nuts? <laughs> um, right, uh, deer the, Hunter? Or not deer, deer Hunter, Hunter, but like those Deer Hunter games. Um, like, the, like the ones that actually had like single player campaigns. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cabela's. Cabela's, like, yeah. Cabela's Hunt, Buck yeah. Hunter, yeah. Oh, Big Rigs. Yeah, that That's a good sense. one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Like at first I thought the question was like, what video game like thing is the equivalent of Truck Nuts? And my answer wanted to be uh, live services, live service games, uh, anime collaborations <laughs> uh am i am i old for like looking at the cowboy bebop and overwatch thing and just being like uh this, yeah, this I, game used to have dignity <laughs> it I, just made me well, a bit much i think if, it, if they did a better job with it you would uh yeah you'd be an yes. old man but i think it looks pretty bad so i think you're right look at the fortnite stuff like the fortnite stuff is cool yeah no one complains about the fortnite although the fortnite never had dignity Bison. Fortnite never was like supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Fortnite was never supposed to take itself seriously. Not that Overwatch no, took itself very seriously. Dignity? When the fuck did. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Overwatch had it was game, well, It was like the shoot game of the year. It wasn't like, you know, oh, Fortnite's technically game of the year because just so many people are playing it. Uh, and like, obviously, Fortnite is a, a good game, but Overwatch was just like a consensus game of the year. I, there, there, oh. there was a time where Overwatch wouldn't have done things like, well, now the, we're just going to have. Cowboy Bebop exists in this world, so people can cosplay as it uh, as some excuse to sell what? skins. There was a time where they what? would not have done that. That game was a full five, full price game with fucking loot box, and they made like the whole loot box shit super toxic all the time. No, it, like, what yeah, it didn't. No, it didn't make loot boxes toxic. Battlefront Two did that. Uh, everyone. No, that game was also. I don't uh, know. FIFA Maybe did that. It was so popular. Maybe because it was very popular, it didn't like hit them as hard as the other games. But I remember like people not being happy. With the yeah, well, they were all wrong. Yeah. Actually, it was, turns out that was way better than what we have with Overwatch Two. Which no. you see, over you see, Overwatch Two is just like going to make heroes available again now. I like, didn't see that for them. I don't really pay yeah. attention to Overwatch now. Well, yeah, you don't have to buy them in the battle passes. Yeah, yeah, I bet that game's doing great then. Such and apparently, they're going to cancel the the next like well, single player stuff. Uh, what that is, it was GameSpot or somebody interviewed a bunch of the ex uh, devs uh, at Overwatch who have been laid off recently, and a lot of them. Are worried about it uh, uh, ever happening? Are you, is that that's Ridge Racer? Am I teasing something? Who knows? Oh, Ridge, Ridge Racer teaser. Uh, audio listeners, Ridge Jeff Jeff Grubb is holding up one of his Chinese gaming handhelds. It seems to have <laughs> Ridge Racer Chinese playing Chinese on handheld. it. This is Jan's gaming handheld. Yep. Oh my god! Oh, uh, right. looking. Stuff. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, it's the this the Miu Mini Plus, and the game looks really good on here. Holy crap! So yeah. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm I'm uh, stopping derailing the show. You're good. Oh, God, that does look good with just that Ridge Racer 4 look. Man. Yes. Well, great. <sighs> One of the best UIs ever. Probably yep. undisputed until, like, Persona 5 happened. I Holy like crap. big primary colors and just some text yes. on there. Uh, Metal Gear Ghost Babble, just Metal Gear for Game Boy Color, uh, with that red screen, and then the text on there just looks so good. Yeah. And I like Striking. This I mean, that's basically what, like, the Persona games are good at now. They're like, yeah, let's have, like, that one really popping primary color, and then, yeah, but build around it. it looks fantastic. Uh, okay. Uh, Joy Z says, it feels like we are at an all-time high for 80-plus-hour games, and most people don't seem to have the time to play even half of them. Do you think there is space for a sort of reverse director's cut in huge games that cuts them to the essentials, or do you think costs of developing all that content in the half admittance that a larger por portion of a game could be seen as a waste of time We'll prevent that. I don't. I I like that reverse right just cut idea, uh, Joyzy. I could see it not really playing. I think that maybe we're all gonna it. have to come together and realize we need to stop making so many eighty plus hour games. Yeah, I I mean I really like this idea. Uh, like I like this idea. Mike's right. They wouldn't do it because they wouldn't be able to sell it. But um, the idea of like a Cliff's Note modder that just goes out and mods video games to be the um what's it called when a book is shortened, not annotated. Um, the cliff notes. Not I mean, cliff notes is like the like the cheat sheet. There's like a word for it, but abridged. Ab thank you. The abridged version of a video game, 
as as a mod, I would do that for a lot of video games that I will, will otherwise not play. That sounds amazing. I think most people aren't asking for that because there's like this pride of like, no, I'm going to play the video game. I respect the developers. You know, Dan Reichert's whole thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I would absolutely adore that. I think that'd be great. Uh, Adam Juice says, Dear Mike and Jeff, for this game's game club, Bolt Gun, there have been discussions about being a perfect game to play as a warm-up before starting a full gaming session. Are there any games like this for you that you enjoy playing just a bit of to get you into a gaming mood, but not something you're willing to dedicate an entire night to? Excluding Bellatro. Per Chaos Buckaroo, can we get a Mount Rushmore of four play games? <laughs> I don't really know if I do this though, Jeff. I think I usually just go and go and right away. No four play. Yeah. Just get right <laughs> in there on the whatever I mean to actually nope. be playing. Um yeah, I I mean, I don't do this all the time, but uh yeah, there's games where it's like, I want to start playing something, but I don't know what to, to play. So, and I'm just going to sit here and like have analysis paralysis and not ch choose something. So I'd rather just start playing a game I know I'm going to enjoy. And that's almost always Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Uh, that's, I can play that all the time. And I do play that all the time. Uh, so that's the game for me most of the time. Although occasionally it'll be like, you know, the N64 NSO thing. I'll just go play some games on there. Yeah, sometimes I will do so that. So frustrating when the game makes you edge. <laughs> <laughs> Always be clothing. Says, dear Mike, we don't have to respect women. Minotti and Jeff, not too left grub. What non packs related thing are you looking forward to the most in Boston? Roundhouse, Tiki Bar, Jan, Gift Exchange? Um, uh, so we've been talking about going to a Tiki Bar. I think it'll probably be this place called Shore Leave I was told about that looks nice and is relatively close to the convention center. And I'm still hoping... Uh, I can go to the Cheers bar, Jeff. I would really like to do that. Yeah, I mean, that should be easy to pull off because it's not like it's all, there's a whole thing there. You just go there and look at it and you leave. Um, get a couple drinks, of course. Yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah, that's again, there's not much to that. Uh, yeah. Uh, God, all these things sound fun. I want to give Jan his gift. I want to um, go to that Tiki bar real bad. And then I want to watch Roadhouse. I suppose... I would be the saddest if we didn't go to the Tiki Bar. So that must be the thing I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, yeah, I think Tiki Bar is probably the, uh, 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 the biggest deal. Uh, Mr. Boris says, hey, Nintendo, which of these original IP games that were developed by Nintendo EPD do you think will get a new entry on the Switch successor? ARMS, Game Builder Garage, Ring Fit Adventure. I think Ring Fit Adventure Ring Fit is Adventure. definitely going to happen. That yes. game they'll do at least one really well. Yeah, made a ton of money. It's uh, way more than either of those other games, um, especially Game Builder Garage. But um, I think Arms could happen as well. But Ring Fit Adventure, I think we will get a second one of those. It will be they, they will just have another one of those that sits on the Switch too, the way that the first one is set on the Switch. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure Game Builder Garage probably not happening. Arms, I hope does. Like that was a good idea that just needs expanded a bit. You can have some more fun with that. Yep. Beef Hammer says, is it this is it uh, is the disappointing launch of the Battlefield collection the closest we've ever been as an industry to Orwell's 1984? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's that thing. Wow. You lift up the calendar and it's like, oh, my God, it's 1984 because of the Whoa. Battlefront collection. Um, Big super chat. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I'll read this right now. Actually, Chris Quinton. Thank you so much, Super Chat. It says, on the last episode of Smashy Bet, I played the song Photograph that was sung by Dan's sister in the voice of Toad. Now I can't get the thought of you doing a duet of the song Jeff had to sing from Kingdom Hearts during Hyrule Hustle. Please help. Um, yeah, yeah, I want you to know, Chris, I, uh, my brothers were over. We had just recorded 90s Disney. I was like, let's all watch Dan stream together. And when I tuned in, that was what was happening, was the uh, <laughs> that, the photograph toad thing happening. So that was that was incredible. Thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, Battlefront, huh? Again, I mean... It's not so I'm not so much surprised that uh, we kind of they kind of beefed it and phoned it in here, Jeff, but they chose the wrong game. Me and you know this. Uh, did they were they like us and they just didn't know how much people actually care about Battlefront 2? You right. could have made real money here. Yep. If they would have put uh, if they would have done the extra work to uh, make this the game that all these fans really wanted, they probably would have done very well. I bet this game still does pretty OK, um, despite all this. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Uh, this is not the one to mess up because now you've pissed off a generation of gamers as we've learned the hard way yes. many times now, Mike Minotti. Absolutely. Lenny cool, Dick no, we never I... Lenny cool Dick Dever says, <laughs> with Mike still playing Mortal Kombat Mythologies and Jeff is now in Mario Maker Hell, 
When was the moment you realized that Dan won? Oh, I've accepted that we're all just living in Dan Riker's yeah. world quite some time ago. Exactly. Uh, I do the thing where it's like, um, oh, I'll just be the bullfighter. I'll let them run past me. It's like, that. Ah, nope, no matter what, Dan always, you know, the horns always get and poke you in the chest and you die. Yeah. I think as soon as other people started calling me Mitch, I knew that Dan won. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, I don't think I said this. Thank you, Chris Quinton, for that super chat. That was very generous. Yes, thank you, Chris. Hoss says, hey, oh, dogs, I've gone back to beat Skyward Sword HD and found myself really liking the jank, such as the right stick sword attack. However, I spent an hour in Pokemon yesterday and found myself holding down the L shorter button to look around like a fucking idiot. Have you taken any bad habits from one game to another? Uh, sometimes, like, you know, if I play one game with inverted controls and the other one doesn't, or maybe a jump on somewhere else for a hot second, it'll, it'll trip me up. But I, I get readjusted pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I, I'm realizing that I actually get, I adjust pretty quickly as well these days still. Um, it is, there is a little bit of frustration, but I just, I, I try to, you know, maybe this is coming from the meditation. I try to just let that go really quick. And I'm like, no, just get back into it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. And eventually that's true. And it's not even really that long. It probably is usually like a 10 at most 15 minute process. Well, I'll say Primes is Dearest Dogs. It's been a long road getting here. So I would like to know if you could rent out a movie theater to play one game on the big screen, what game would it be? I immediately went to Smash Brothers. Either Melee or Ultimate would be fine. I think if I had to pick, I would pick Melee just for the lols, as they say. Yeah, I uh, when I was at, when I was seeing Dune 2, uh, I always forget Nintendo's always got that was big that like right? theater campaign because uh, Mario did very well. So they're like, hey, do you, you know what else Mario's and video games? And so they had Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Uh, they were advertising, and it looked so cool on the big screen. I'm like, I would love if I could just yeah. play this right now on this screen. So the first thing that came to mind is Wonder. I mean, you do have to imagine, like, what would Tetris Effect be like in, like, a really nice theater setup with, like, oh, a sound shit. system. Oh, shit, that right? sounds fantastic. Yeah. On, like, um, an IMAX screen with a dual laser, yeah. so it, like, the even colors really pop. A lot, yeah, even LIMAX. Yeah, the thing, the thing with LIMAX is, the reason it's still worth going to LIMAX is, they do use the dual laser projection usually, so it's gonna, still going to be by far the best screen around you, even if you don't have a real IMAX. Clink says, consider this, Wallatro. It's just Bullatro, but with Wario Jokers and Waluigi Tarot Cars. Time for Nintendo to get back to their playing card roots. Hey, that actually sounds kind of great. That could make a lot of sense. God, that'd be cool. That'd be, like, they, um, you know how, like, Nintendo just, you know, got the... Uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer people to make a Zelda game. Just get, just pay the Bellatro people to make a Fuck. Waluigi game. Yeah, that would rule. Oh my god, I would really be down for that. Uh, Hammond of Texas says, hey my dog duders. As I am sure both of you know, there has been quite a few tornadoes in Ohio the past several weeks, with some turning deadly in the Indian Lake community in Logan County. With weather becoming more and more extreme, do you and your families have safety plans in place? A uh, link to the United Way of Logan County that shares resources and has an Indian Lake Tornado Relief Fund. Thank you so much for that. I'll share that in chat. I'm good um, I mean, I don't, aside from go, going to the basement, right, which mm, uh, that might not work. You know, th th that's kind of what, what I'm uh, that's the sort of all that I do. Tornadoes is the one thing we do worry about in Ohio in terms of natural disasters. There's some bad storms, I guess. Sometimes. Yeah, I think I, well, we're a little bit about flooding as well. But uh, sure. yeah, tornadoes are the big one for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I. Uh, the plan is run to the basement. The kids are now getting old enough where it's like, oh, we probably should be talking about this with them. Normally, it's just like, you know, for the last six years, it's like, hey, no, I'm just going to grab them under my arm and take them where they need to go. Um, but now there's a chance like, you know, Emmy sometimes goes up and plays in a room by herself without telling anybody. And I'm like, where is Emmy? So like, hey, if she hears those tor tornado sirens, I might tell her what she needs to do. This is a good reminder. Thank you for that, Hammond. There you go. Weisman says, hey, yo, boy, yo's with packs just around the corner. Is there anything you already know you'll be interested in checking out games, developer booths, other panels? Yeah, there's um, yes, there's like a Final Fantasy 14 panel for Dawn Trail, the next expansion. I think I'm going to be able to make that. Uh, I'm excited to see, you know, I'm excited for our panels and to check out the ones I'm not in. Jeff, you're going to be doing kind of feudy with the kind of funny people. I hope I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to watch that. Uh, see you absolutely beef it on the stage. That'd be a good time. Yeah, you know it. Um, yeah, um, my buddy Miles, uh, uh, who, uh, you know, he's an Xbox guy, but he now works at, um, uh, Ilphonic, I think he works at Ilphonic and he's working with the team that's working on that killer clowns game. And I think they're oh. going to be showing that off. So I'm going to go check that, that out if I get a chance. Um, and then there was like some, I like the really, uh, uh, 
narrowed down panels to one or like, wait, we're just going to talk about Super Metroid. And I think there's a panel about that on the first day I'm going to try to get over uh-huh. to and check out. Uh, and then from... Hey, Mike, actually, can we take a quick break? I just got to run to the potty. Yeah, you know what? It is about that time. We'll take a quick break so Jeff can go pee-pee. Thank you. All right, I'll be right back. Break, break. Oh, this is rare. I'm He's the one who's still here. He's I'm lying. He's going to go watch hockey. Oh, that must be it. Are they actually winning now? They, no, seems like he's giving up on them. Not. Probably no, not. I'm going to check out. Indeed. What's the name of his team? The Red, Red Wings. Wings. Oh, they're. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's final. They won. They won. Oh, they won. So that's why he was so they excited. Won. Oh, against Columbus. He, he, was, he was so hyped out. He peace himself. Yeah, looks like Columbus is a pretty bad team. So I'm glad they beat them then. How about that? That's a weird logo, the Detroit Red Wings. Didn't they go to, uh, is this the team that she's got a. Uh... A um, sponsor, and they won. They, they yeah, that's they that's what sponsor, Jeff said. They, they kept losing. Yeah, yeah the they got liter- car- literal garbage company. Yeah, they got they got a garbage company's patch on their uniforms, and ever since then they've been doing bad. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's a that's a real thing. I am um, uh, fighting uh, fighting games uh, players. Like sometimes they get that the curse of the of the sponsor. Like whenever they get sponsored, they start losing. It's like oh shit, oh. like a real curse. That reminds me. Remember when you porn tried to sponsor some people, and it, oh, <laughs> there was yeah. this whole discussion about, like, "Oh, hmm, can we allow that logo?" <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Hey, Jeff. Well, hey, uh, I'm back. Uh, only. F- all right, you ready? I am ready. Talk about porn at all? Oh, Let's my go. God. And we're back. All right, Jeff. Next question here from Chaos Buckaroo. Howdy, fellas. If you could put out a terrible port of a PS2 era game, what would it be, and how would you make it worse? Let me look at my PS2 games, Jeff. To see yeah, what yeah. Say. Yes, I'm just going to type in PS2 games into Google, and I'll pick one of the first ones I see. Oh, this wasn't helpful. Oh, <laughs> I'd do God of War, and I'd make it so woke to make him upset. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, I would, uh, like, when, you, when you're supposed to have, like, sex with, like, the top of slaves, uh-huh. I would, like, tell them, I'd be like, you should, like, like, you should be ashamed of hoping that this was still in here. Yeah, no, oh, it's... They could- Instead of the threesome, you're right. It should be uh, like one of those DEI uh, classroom classes you have to do when you're at a, when you work at a corporation. Oh, they get so mad. It should, and so it should great. be like that. You have to take a quiz at the end, and if you get it wrong, the whole thing starts over. Uh, right. so that that sounds uh, very and good. And then I'd laugh. Oh and then man, I'd yeah, laugh. I would love that. Yeah, God, uh, I, I shave top. Like I, like one of the main guy's things about like what tipped him off that something was wrong. Jeff with video games was like in the new God of War in Valhalla when Kratos like doesn't kill a character uh-huh. and he's like the kratos from the ps2 games definitely would have and i was like what could this be and it's like oh <laughs> and, my and, god but, and you know the kicker to that story right what he never played that that new god of war game that's right never even played it never played it clip. yeah we're just it's complaining like, about games yet we haven't played like that fucking paper mario uh meme uh, where it's like <sighs> do you like to complain yes. about games you haven't played on the internet yes i do just uh just like nope character development for somebody over a course of like major life events in hundreds thousands of years that can't happen (laughs) characters don't change no no they have to be exactly how they were when i was 15 um b says i've been into anime again lately like watching habani renmei and furian what nintendo ip would you like to see properly adapted into an anime i mean fire emblem makes the most sense i don't I don't know if there's ever been a Fire Emblem anime, which yeah, is that's a, a good question. Bit, I guess, you know, I, I want to say a little surprising, but I guess not that surprising. Nintendo pretty strict with these kind of things. But maybe the time is now. Um, there is an anime film of this already, but uh, people tend to not like it, although I think it's like fine if you put it on the background. Uh, animal Crossing. I think Animal Crossing yeah. would be a really nice sort of, uh, you know, afternoon after school sort of anime. One of those. I think I would I, th- I think I would be happy to like show that to the kids. Riz Racer, Jeff, any Ridge Racer news says, hey, dogs, no question this week other than the one in my username's parentheses. Well, there you go, Jeff. <laughs> and you tease us earlier, but come on, just spit it out. I can only tease. You know, PAX is coming up soon. We'll see what happens there. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, the Rebirth Wolf 5 says, hey, dogs, I've been itching for a Super Mario Odyssey replay, but I'm purposely holding back to wait for the next 3D Mario games reveal. They ever had to stop yourselves from playing slash replaying a game. Yeah, like, like I kind of want to play Metroid Prime 2 because you know I haven't beat that game and I'm like that's probably getting remastered or at least put on Switch at some point here I just want to wait till it's on that 
Uh, there have been situations like that before where I know a game is probably getting remastered or re-released soon, so I, I try to just wait. Yep, yeah, it's pretty similar for me, but uh, it, it, honestly, the answer probably is Metroid Prime 2. Alex says, hey, dogs, it's the first day of spring. Going to do any spring cleaning for the bl the backlog? No, nothing too soon here, although I will be playing Bolt Gun soon for the Game Mess Game Club. And, you know, I've been looking forward to that. Uh, I'm definitely in the mood for a boomer shooter. Yeah, spring cleaning for games is not really on the table anytime soon. Uh, spring cleaning for, like, my gaming station and areas. That is, yeah, I'm, like, um, going to redo my desk over here. I'm going to put a shelf. And so all these wires that are everywhere, it'll still be a mess. Uh, but I want to, like, I know for a fact there's probably, like, three wires in there, three cords and cables that are not connected to anything on either side. And I just want to get that stuff cleaned up. So that's the kind of spring cleaning I'm going to do. Bobotro says, Wolf Wolf to my dogs. If Nintendo had to make a Dune 2 popcorn bucket equivalent, what would it be? Thanks, as always. I I almost made a joke. I really can't. Oh, I'm sorry. Boy. No. Okay. Uh, um, no, you can use your imaginations. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to think what's it the, the piranha plant. Oh, Birdo's face. Oh, that you nailed it. Yeah. You nailed it in one. Jeff. There it is. Good job. Yeah, we got it. It took a nailed second, it. but we got there. Shoot hot American summer says, hi dogs. I know you're already podcast so much that you are doing it in other people's dreams, but if Joe <laughs> Biden issued an executive order compelling you to start another podcast, that one was not about video games. And two it was with someone you have not previously hosted a podcast with. What would this show be about? And who would you conscript? to do it with oh um Someone gosh not previous okay I, I would just force jan to get into lorcana and do a lorcana podcast with me i think that doesn't count as someone you have not previously hosted a podcast with because you're a guest on there you're like yeah, i think you're right I'm a, I'm a guest yeah that that one's okay i think right? that's right that's yes fine um i i would do a movie podcast um i think i had an idea for like like, you know, a different take on that the other day, and I forgot about that, too. Is it so, going to call Movies Are Mid? Uh, yeah, Movies Are Mid, and I would do it with uh, Schmike McSchmnotty. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even imagine doing podcasts know, right? me. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll get AJ. There we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Corey Williams says, hey, dogs, I think I've been listening for around a year now. I want to say thanks. Thank you, Corey. Last night uh, podcasts were essential last year when my – or late night podcasts were essential last year. When my daughter was born, and I stayed – uh, for the good times. This is maybe hard to explain, but I attended Catholic grade school and high school outside of Cleveland and then went to college in Ypsilanti. Ysp Ysp Ypsilanti. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, so more so than others, your podcast will like hang out with my weird friends. Thanks for that. No games question. So, Mike, what's your favorite Great Lakes brewing beer? I was actually just wondering, as you were saying that, Corey, if you happen to go to St. Ignatius right by Great Lakes Brewing, if that was the Catholic school you're talking about. I park at St. Ignatius all the time when I'm going to Great Lakes. Uh, very much. My favorite Great Lakes beer was uh, Holy Moses, uh, which was a white ale that they made for many years. They, they have not brewed it in quite a while, which is a bummer. They make a lot of other good ones, though. Elliot Ness, which they always have, is right. always a That's fantastic uh, amber. Well, their, their biggest staple is Dortmunder, which is also always very good. Now, I'll never uh, sneer at a Dortmund. And, of course, Christmas Ale is a Stone Cold classic. Yeah, but what time of year is it, Mikey? It's oh, Conway's Irish Ale time. Conway's Irish I Ale is I got so delicious. excited when I saw that in the store the other day because I don't think I got it last year. I just didn't – it didn't occur to me to even look. And I it wasn't really thinking about looking this year because I was in Colorado for so long. They didn't have it out there. So when I saw it on the store shelf, I was like, I got this warmth over me. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in a place where I can get Conway's in March. So, yeah, uh, for me, it's Conway's Irish Ale. Yeah, I do love Conway's. I'm always happy to see that I, Tile Pop. They have a uh, like a 35th anniversary beer that I picked up. It's a bourbon <laughs> barrel aged beer. It's like 12 percent. Uh, that's strong. We'll be drinking that during this show, but also very good. Uh, they make a lot of stuff. If you're anywhere near Cleveland, they they, they ship pretty wide out now, but, you know, like not uh, the entire continental U.S. But if you ever see Great Lakes Brewing Company beers, uh, you should definitely try one. They're very good. Uh, Zoomer says, for a long time, I thought my 2019 game of the year were my first two Switch games, Luigi's Mansion 3 and Fire Emblem Three Houses, only to find out that the masterpiece that is The Outer Worlds came out in 2019. I don't know how to turn this into a question. Have at it. I always have to, <laughs> like, make sure I'm looking right. Outer Worlds, not Outer Wilds. Right. This is the Obsidian one. Yes, it is. That's like, it's like a Fallout game in space. 
no, uh, in, a, in, yes. in a more appealing way than Starfield. Actually. <laughs> I don't know why I had to make that. Uh, I actually, re- I, I liked Outer Worlds. I I do need to play Outer Wilds. Somehow I missed that. I feel bad about that. Yeah. Um. God, I'm like, would you like Outer Wilds? I think you would. Would, but it's I think like I'd li- every, everyone I respect likes it. I'm sure I would like it. Yeah. It's um. You just gotta know to look at your board. That's the big thing. Just look at the board. That's the only piece of advice I would give. Uh, yeah, because it, it does require you to figure everything out. Kind of similar to Oberden, but also very similar to like Breath of the Wild. So yeah, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, so the, the, what was the attempted question here? Only to find out the master. Okay, so Luigi's Mansion 3 and Fire Emblem 3 Houses were 2019. Well, anyway, which, which game do you like most? Luigi's Mansion 3, Fire Emblem 3 Houses, or Outer Worlds from 2019? Uh, Here's my God. question to you. Yeah, I think it probably is Luigi's Mansion 3. I, th- I think it's probably Luigi's Mansion 3. I like Three Houses a lot. Three Houses is I great. Do. It's fantastic. But and I enjoyed Luigi's- Outer Worlds, but for me, that was kind of like a solid B, where sure. we're talking about for Three Houses and Luigi's Mansion 3, those are A's, and it may be A plus for Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, J- or, uh, excuse me, Shoji Koto says, Hey, doggies, have either of you played that new game, Llama Soft, the Jeff Minter story that came out last week? Dude made some absolutely trippy games, and I'm glad I got to learn a little bit of that history. Are there any game devs you'd like to see similar interactive docu- documentaries on? No, I haven't. Um, yeah, I mean, either. I have I've been, not played it. I will get around to this one. I've liked, mm-hmm. you know, I liked Atari 50, and I liked, um, uh, the Je- not the Jeff Minter one, the, um, uh, the the Prince of Persia one, uh, and yeah, so I want to play this one as well. But uh, oh, I'm sorry, Karatika, making a Karatika. Um, yeah. But I, for, uh, God, do this for everybody. I mean, honestly, do this for every game out there. Um, I, I think the the one that's most realistic that could happen that I think would be the most interesting is Doom, just an id early id software. That would be incredible, and I bet there's some a million great stories that those guys would be willing yeah, to share. Yeah, give me a John Romero game. A John Romero, like John that. Carmack. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, and then like because then they they eventually start fighting, right? Like there's tension yeah, like, yeah. eventually. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I I would play a game about the Williams, Ken Williams, or Burr oh, Williams, be great. Sierra Online about all that stuff. Yeah, about I think maybe I should speak out there. What the there were orgies or something in there. Or oh, yeah, definitely. Or, yeah, yeah. But that, like sex, drugs, and alcohol. Yeah, that's, like a that was true in almost all the studios. There. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People like lived at Sierra online. So it was like, you know, real, it was real 80s. In there. Yeah, that was true of Atari as well. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, JD Camp says Dan's next bike game should be Gollum so he can dress up as a wizard. Perhaps Yen Sid. Why wouldn't he dress up as Gollum, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh man, that's really funny. How would uh, we dress him up as Gollum? I don't. Just, I, shirtless, just shirtless. Oh, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably not. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> yeah, making a dress up as a wizard is actually better. Um, I, I do. I like the idea of you guys both each playing your different Daikatana. Uh, it does feel like we've come to that because, it, Mike, you shared that thing with me, and now there's only like four people who made that same joke now at this right. point. So my, it's just like is my, there in the air. Mine still looks the best, though, right? Oh, of course, you did a really good job. Yeah. You okay, yeah, bud? I'm, I'm I'm very smart. Um, yeah, I'm good. Sorry, I got stuck trying to read something in chat. Uh, no. don't worry, I got this. Next one's Bucket Dale says, "Hey, big dogs, I was looking through some old gaming mags via Retro Mags and came across an ad for this weird early VR headset. What would you want to play on the Scuba? This is the uh from Philips Magnavox, uh the Scuba headset. Uh. I, I want to play Dino Egg. Remember Dino Egg, the VR game that you could play at malls in the 90s? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I know what you're talking about. I don't know if I Dino ever Egg actually... Dino Egg and Dino Egg 2. I don't know if, <laughs> I, if I ever actually played any of those. I did play some weird like VR installation thing, uh, but I don't think it was Dino Egg. God, I wish I could remember what that was. Uh, yeah, what would I want to play on Scuba? I would I would want to play the Water World game for Virtual Boy. Hell yeah. Oh, course. that's a good answer, too. Yeah. Adam GC says is looking up the number of chapter slash levels, etc. while playing a game in any way cheating. I generally try to avoid looking up anything about a game I'm playing, so it feels yicky. But sometimes I can't resist knowing how much more of my life I have to devote to a game. No, that's not cheating. Not I cheating look at up all. That kind of stuff all the time. I just want to know. There's a table of contents at the beginning of a book. Uh, it, it would be a normal thing if video games did the same thing. It would not right. be some out of the ordinary thing. Or they should do that more frequently. And when you're reading a book, you just inherently know how much more is left right. all the time. Yeah, exactly. You're just holding it like, yeah, exactly. So it's, and games should find more ways to do the same thing, I think. Um, I do this frequently. I am like, okay, I've been playing for a long time. I'm on chapter eight. God, I'd like to know how many chapters are left. So when I find out like, oh, there, there's 
28 chapters. What the hell? And then I give up, like in Fire Emblem, whatever the hell that one was, uh, the, the ring one. Engage. Uh, engage, yes. Um, and then well, w- a lot of other ones where it's like, okay, no, you're on, like, there's chapter 12. That's the end. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's more reasonable. So, yeah. Wong Gift says, is Nintendo the worst company in terms of game preservation? They're going after emulators and remove games like Mario 35 from its service so they can never be played again. Remove games from sale, Mario Collection, and they put old games on their subscription service but don't allow you to buy them. Is Doug Bowser the new Jim Ryan? Can we hope for improvement in the future? Well, not, I don't think um, almost none of these things are Doug Bowser's decisions. I'll say and that. All least. these things are like not that out of the ordinary for, for any company. They are all kind of either doing similar stuff or worse and maybe occasionally sometimes better. Um, I don't think Nintendo's that much worse than any of these other companies, except for maybe what they've done to the recent uh, spat of emulators. That was a bit more than anyone else has done. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. They're not. They're definitely not good for game preservation. They are. They are not. And, and at least that weird moment there, where they were like selling some games for a limited time, it, it seemed like a weird test that we are now past. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're they're not doing it anymore. So yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, Michael Riley says, Mike, would you give up your memory abilities for a full head of hair? Uh, <laughs> Jeff, would you give up your locks for a strong memory? Ugh. I would not give up my memory. It's the one thing I've got on certain people. <laughs> so I need that. God, maybe I'm, I'm I would I would <laughs> I would consider it. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to remember things. <laughs> that would be it'd be a very different world if that was possible. <laughs> Jump Matt says, given the Switch 2 delay, will Nintendo have a big fall game? If so, what do you think it is? I'll be for Mushroom Kingdom Warriors, personally. I'm going to ask the big question, is uh, what are we going to get this fall from Nintendo? And I still have a hard time believing it's some like really big game. It might still just be some kind of like port or remaster, which will be good enough. I'm shocked it won't be a Pokemon game. I guess it can still be. Could but maybe. It'll look like probably not. Um, so like, like, like maybe it is like one waker and, and twilight princess collection. Maybe it's that mushroom kingdom warriors. It would rule if that was what yeah. it was. That'd be fantastic. Honestly, something like that doesn't seem like it's off the table. So we'll see, you, you know, my opinion, jump Matt. I, I think there's a chance mm. it's still Metroid prime four, but we'll see. We'll see indeed. Yep. Screaming Man and says, hey, Mike, Law, Minotti, and Jeff, heh, 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 grub. No <laughs> gaming questions this week, but curious, uh, does Disney film professor Mike have a letterbox? While we're at it, I'll guess what Mike's four favorite films on Letterboxd would be, and then Mike will mock how wrong I am. That's pretty um, good. No, I don't. I don't actually have a letterbox, but let's see here now. Uh, the four on here that that uh, Screaming Madden has are Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, DuckTales, The Movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp, Avatar, Way of the Water, and Robo. Cop. Uh, those are all very good movies. I don't think any of them would be on my top four. I bet actually Home Alone 2 would be the closest. It'd be the to closest, top yes. Four. Yeah. Uh, Commando, um, would that be in the top four? I'd be, have a very good chance. Uh, I'd have to do things like, like my, my favorite movie of all time is like Lord of the Rings. And I say that to cheat. Like that's three movies. If I had to really pick one, probably be Fellowship. Um, but you know, I don't want to give three spots right away to that. Yeah, then there's Fellowship's always the best. Up. Rocketeer would be on there. I think somebody told me Next Lander. I think they said it was Next Lander. Like did a Rocketeer watch yeah, they, along or yeah, they're, they're, and- not a watch along. They do a, 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 re, a rewatch podcast where they watch it and then they talk about it. And that is one of the movies they're doing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so somebody tattled on me that they did not care for it. What? That's crazy. Why not? It's so good. It's so good. Oh man, I love that movie. Holy shit. So um, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll meet them. And I'll get off on a really strong foot with them. The yep. first thing I'll ever say is, hey, I heard that on a thing you did that I didn't watch, you said something that I'm mad about. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll go over really well. That that people love that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I watched Robocop the first time long, not long ago. I liked it. I don't think it's like sniffing my top, you know, 50 or anything like that. Laser Wolf says, hello, Jeff. Please put the Patreon feed on Spotify, Grub. And Mike, please remind Jeff to do that, Minotti. Hey, Jeff, you should put the Patreon feed on Spotify. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it, Laser Wolf. Mm, uh, I'll, I'll look. Yeah. Yeah. Ch- ch- check, check it out, Christian. Like, let me know. Because yes. the way it, the way it works right now is that there's a Patreon feed and, and it we, goes, uh, goes through. I've, uh, I've brought this up before. We'll talk about it after the show again, Jeff. Okay. It can work. So it goes through ACAST okay. right now. And I, I I don't know if that's. There, yeah. There's another thing that we need to set up. I'll show you how to set up. Okay. Right. I, I right, definitely right. made an option where it's like, it's like do this or ACAST. So I just hope we didn't mess it up there. Okay. We'll find out. 
Uh, what are the chances of that Fire Emblem remake coming out this year? Yeah, that's one that I probably should have brought up in the earlier question. That yes. could still be a holiday game for well, sure. I mean, I, I would assume it is at this point. Jamie H one two two four says, "No question this week. Just want to point out that the my Nintendo store in Ireland is selling a Luigi bobblehead, Luigi's Mansion, and a Paper Mario diorama with Thousand Year Door. Oh, that looks uh, great. Which was the deciding factor to make me put both of them. Yeah, I mean, especially this diorama. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make Lex just get me that. Uh, I still think that looks fantastic. Uh, uh, I saw Andy from uh, VGC got that one of those Pikmin terrariums. I want one of those real bad." Oh, that's good. I am glad that more people are going to get to play Thousand Year Door. What a good game. Yep. Punished Rose says, Hello, Beep and Cheddar Council. With all the talk lately about how crazy expensive the budgets for AAA games are getting, do you know of any good sources for what the budgets are of games at different sizes? If Spider-Man 2 costs 300 plus million, what does a Princess, Princess Peach Showtime or a Hell Divers 2 cost? People are usually pretty secretive about this kind of stuff, right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we don't really know. I mean... Insomniac is based in California, right? I think they're based in, I think they're in California. Yeah. Um, I would, it's either the Bay Area or LA and either one, it's going to be, that's why that thing costs $300 million. Like just straight up, the people there cost more. Um, Prince Speed Showtime doesn't require as many people, probably didn't require as many years of development and is a, just a much simpler game. So yeah, just all around, you can imagine it's it's going to be much cheaper, but we don't really know how to do the math there necessarily. We can guess, we can look at some like average costs or average uh, salaries for developers and stuff and, and try to estimate, uh, but they are not sharing it publicly. So we don't really know. I can tell you it is almost certain that Helldivers 2 and Princess Peach Showtime are sub $100 million games. Princess Peach Showtime is probably like below 50 million, honestly. And Helldivers 2 is probably not that much more. I mean, it's pretty, like, um, we know that uh, Ghost of Tsushima cost 60 million. That was in that leak. I mean, if that's a $60 million game, you can get away with making both of those for much less, much less than that. Oh, my. That, that's a, the, the difference there is incredible to me between that budget and the budget for the Spider Man games. That's yeah. Uh, Isaac Clark says, Evening Dogs, why do bad things happen to uh, good uh, people? Because morality is not baked into the laws of nature. Yep. And, uh, and, and because you touch yourself at night. Tink says, Pokemon Sleep. I'm just trying. I'm just saying that so the question seems relevant to Nintendo. But Mike, how does one achieve the perfect nap? I get a headache every time. I take one. Um, I, eh, I'm starting to get headaches after naps too. Honestly, I get shorter than that. Yeah, don't that's my problem. More than one hour, more like the 40 minutes. Uh, 20 the, minutes. Do do a 20 uh, minute. Yeah, that's okay, what you need uh, to be doing. Uh, uh, so the perfect nap is, and we talk, I've talked about this a bunch of times. Me and, naps. Yeah, me and Jan talk about it. Get get a whatever your best form of uh, of imbibing caffeine, uh, but likely something like a coffee or an espresso, something that's just going to get a lot of caffeine really quick. Go lay down, close your eyes. It's okay if you don't actually fall asleep. Just close your eyes for 20 minutes and then get up no matter what. And you're going to feel better. Like almost certainly like your brain, your brain will produce a lot of dopamine and, and serotonin. And you'll be a lot better off when you get up after that. But yeah, 20 to 30 minutes is like the range you want to be aiming for. That's the problem is like, if I, if I don't take a two hour nap, then I just feel very groggy. And if I take one longer than that, I get a headache. I think I just don't really need to be taking naps anymore for the most part. I, I find excuses, though, like today I took a nap because I was feeling unwell yesterday and I'm still like, well, let's rest just in case that's not completely uh, take bitten away yet. So I'm good for packs and I'm fine now. But I still took a nap like a shithead. Yeah. D drink, drink the caffeine before the nap. Yes. You, you drink the caffeine and then you go lay down. And as it's like taking its effect, uh, if you are laying down and mostly inactive and have your eyes closed, it will have a mostly positive effect on your brain. Uh, Jeremy Biff says, with Warner Brothers on fire right now, Nintendo having a history of making games of Warner Brothers IP like Quest for Camelot and DC <laughs> Superhero Girls. I guess that's right. What Warner IP do you want Nintendo to make a game out of? A search party game that fills in the gaps in the last season of Episode 5, an Aqua Team Hunger Force game, a Flintstones game, or a new Mortal Kombat mythologies. Man, Nintendo making a Mortal Kombat mythologies sure would be something yeah um mm -hmm. i think i would want rush hour with jackie chan uh just go ahead and make a movie like or make a video game based on that nintendo that uh, rush hour 4 the film we never uh, got steven universe they want i don't know what they'll do steven universe they, we actually they actually made uh 
with supposedly decent Steven Universe like turn based RPGs. Oh, that really? kind of just look like Paper Mario already. Yeah, there's a some of them are like mobile first, but I think they've all been ported to consoles and like, they're all supposed to be like fun, cute, not super long or anything. Um, so sure, something like that. Uh, next one here is from Bikes and Brews. It says, I saw a different Jeff review gamer scent with which adds smells to your gaming experience. I was thinking it would be great if you could smell food like in games like Persona or Yakuza where you are near food stalls and such. Is there any smell you would like to see in a game? No, I don't like smelling things. I hope that's the sense that goes away first. It likely will be. Smells the one that like most men oh, lose when they're older. So yeah. Um, good. But then it means you don't taste food anymore. So yeah, there's that yeah, as well. Yeah, I realize that those things are linked. So that's a problem. But like, it might be a decent trade off. Um, If I had to smell something in, in games, because I think I'm mostly with Mike on this, I would probably go with... Like, if you're out in a meadow or in a field, like, smelling the grass or the flowers, like, fresh air outside, that, sure. is, that is what I would want to smell. Uh, Willow Davis says, hope you guys have a good time at PAX. Was wondering if you're still going to PAX Summer D's. Pa PAX Summer D's Nuts? Is that what we're going for here? Pack, is that what this is? This is a D's Nuts Summer, Summer D's Nuts? Yeah. I, Summer I, D's. I think this is a uh, these I, th nuts. I think so. I think it's probably yeah, listen, nice try, Willow Davis. Nice try. But, next time. But if you're asking if you're actually asking about the next packs, I'm not <laughs> thinking about that. Vision 49 says, Wolf to the dogs. What do you think are the chances of the Switch 2 being a solid unit like a Steam Deck or Rock Ally with a dedicated chore for when it's docked? Heard Andy Robinson mention on FPS, and the more I think about that, the better it sounds. I mean I could go either way, honestly. I don't think I'm going to be ups too upset if it is uh, Joy-Cons and or if it isn't. I'm not taking those out a lot. A lot of people do, though, especially kids. That's why I think we're still going to see Joy-Cons be a part of this thing, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I, whatever it is, I hope that the next iteration has a more solid connection between the Joy-Con and the Switch. It's something that I notice uh, that where I'm like, this feels just wobbly enough to me to bother me. Um so, and I would expect them to make big improvements on that the next time around. So I think they still probably will disconnect, um, but I wouldn't hate it if it was one solid unit either. DMC depressed me crying says, hi, Jeff and Mike. Earlier, earlier this week, I opened Yuzu to be met with a pop-up message, which read, this is Miyamoto. I'm going <laughs> to beat your ass off and wear it like a helmet. I thought it was some sort of weird glitch. So I closed it and restarted the program only to be met with another message. This time the message read, this is Miyamoto. I am going to cut off your nutsack and nail it to my door. Oh, like one of those door Miloto. knockers those rich guys got. That will be your balls. <laughs> I'm panicking. How bad is life in Nintendo jail? Perhaps I turn myself in and Miyamoto will show mercy and only give me life in Nintendo prison. And my ass and balls will be spared. Please tell me there's some hope. Now nah, your ass and balls are done. Yep. Sorry, son. Just cut them off. <laughs> yeah, just hand them over. That's the best thing just you can do. Uh, that, that way Miyamoto won't go too far and actually kill you. Epic of World says, am I crazy to think Switch 2 will sell less than Switch 1? No. The market has shown that not everyone that got into games during COVID stayed. Are all those moms that bought a Switch for Animal Crossing during COVID going to buy a Switch 2? I doubt it. I mean, I almost kind of expect Switch 2 to not be quite as successful as the Switch 1. Yeah. 3DS wasn't as successful as the DS, right? Like, it happens. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a, a likely scenario here. doesn't mean it will for sure not do as well, but uh, a lot of things played into the Switch's favor, and that is not necessarily going to happen this time around. Right. There won't, knock on wood, not be a pandemic during the Switch 2 life cycle, right? Yeah, you know, so. you know, we'll get a pandemic every six years going forward, probably, so. Yeah. Igante says, woof, woof to my dogs. Question for tonight. What are your thoughts on Unicorn Overlord? I'm about 30 hours in, and I'm really enjoying it. That being said, setting up my battle tactics can be confusing and a little overwhelming. Just curious on your thoughts. Thanks. Yeah, I haven't been able to play it yet because I've still been really full steam on Hypersonic 3. Although I'm beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel there, making really good progress. Starting to play it a bit more than my usual like one hour at, like at night thing, just to kind of like kind of see it through. And because I'm really enjoying it and I keep wanting to play more of it, then Unicorn Overlord will probably be next. Yeah, I downloaded the demo, but I have not started it yet. So, uh, you know, Jan's talked about it, talked about it a bunch, got me excited. So I'm going to try it. Maybe that will be one of the things I play on the plane on my way to PAX. SWSP says, hi, Jeff and Mike. My wife listens to 90s Disney a lot in the shower in oh, eastern Ohio is only about 40 minutes away. Should I be worried? No yes. comment. 
Yes. Jedi Moss Force says hot take. <laughs> You're going to get cucked by 90s Disney. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm in enough trouble this week. <laughs> Pull Mike Minotti, everybody. Watch out. Here okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Jedi Moss Force says hot take. Was the Switch being underpowered actually a good thing for the console? You can argue that since everyone knows you can't really go for cutting edge, expensive visuals, you have to find other creative ways to sell your games, whether it's through gameplay, thinking about how the portability of Switch can enhance certain experiences, and or by having a more creative art style. Not to mention you can save money and time if you're developing just for the Switch. What do you think? Oh, certainly. I agree with all I mean, this. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's. A, it was a big blessing in disguise because the title was able to make a lot more games. Yep. Than, for a lot less money. Uh, yep. Oh, the dog, neighbor dogs barking. Penny's upset. Yeah, I just so, um, I, I think most other companies are going to start looking around and realizing this later. Um, but if you I mean, if you're making games on, on Xbox and PlayStation and PC, you kind of do have to keep up with the Joneses a little bit. And the good news, if you're on Switch, Nintendo's like, no, we're just going to do the art stuff. And you're not going to be able to keep up with that because their art's just going to be better than better than yours. But technology, technologically speaking, you can put out games that look as good as anything else on the Switch. So, yeah, I, I think that um, it's definitely a benefit, and most other companies are going to start coming around to this eventually. Super Harmon says, do you have any favorite dumb news stories from the Switch's life cycle? Like when Nintendo's uh, stock dropped after E3 2018 because a lot of their focus was on a game that went to, on to sell over 30 million copies. Uh, wait, was that some Smash Brothers? Uh, 20, E3 2018. I don't remember. What game? Was yeah, it Animal right, Crossing? Were, uh, that... that is it, no, is it uh, Luigi's Mansion? No, no Luigi's Mansion didn't sell 30 million copies. Yeah, I mean, let's yeah. be reasonable here. Yeah. But was Smash? Why would stock have dropped? Because of Smash, it was. Probably just because they uh, didn't have other things is probably what that was. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, yeah, Remember I'm, the time like their stock went up because everybody thought that they were like going to benefit from Pokemon of, Go, uh, yeah. Yeah, fuck it, go. And then when they had to admit that they weren't, it went back down a bit. Yep, that's the one I was going to mention too. That's definitely, I remember that. I think about that all the time when I'm like, Oh, investors are like doing stuff to the market. I'm like, oh, those idiots! Great, yeah. Remember when they did this with Pokemon Go? I do remember that E3 was like so much about Smash that the people who didn't care about Smash were kind of annoyed. Yes, like, and not, I remember you know, being like, "Well, I'm fine," and I'm like, "Yeah." That was me. Yeah, I was like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, I do this remember is the that. Best E3 ever. Yeah, it really. Like, yes, that that's how you yeah. were, and how it like yeah. it like sort of uh, uh rubbed off where I was like, "Oh yeah, look how happy Mike is. This is great." <laughs> Look, is it? Yeah, everyone, when you're not happy and I am, just look at how happy yes. I am. Because when Mikey's happy, everybody's happy. That's exactly It's right. actually not how it goes, but hey, why yeah, not? kind of how it goes. Big Tony, the Final Fantasy guy, says, My dogs, why don't the children like Final Fantasy? Aren't they stupid? Uh, there's the yeah, they are. principal screen. They're very stupid. I mean, mm. I, bet ki I bet some kids like Final Fantasy. Uh, did you did you see the thing from this week, though, that it's uh, called a BRPG? And do you know what the B stands for? Bad bitch, boomer, Bo boomer. boomer. It's a oh, boomer, boomer RPG. RPGs now. Yep. It, we're, we're not. No. Yep. We're not even. We're talking about Seven Rebirth, also, right? Uh, because I yeah. mean, that's not even turn based oh, now. Yep. Um. Hey, I don't know. Maybe at a certain point, I'm gonna have to accept that. Uh, it's the children who are wrong. Like, well, you know, maybe they don't have to play all the things that I play too. That's okay. Like they make a. Uh, TV shows for old people that are successful. Maybe Fall Fantasy will only be made for people past a certain age forever, and that'll be okay too. And what kids can Michael also Jordan jump in. Yeah, kids, kids can watch, you know, NCIS if they want to. I guess I don't expect them to. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, I guess it is like like what is the opposite of a boomer RPG? And it's like oh man, it's it's Genshin and Honkai Star Rail. Right. That's what. Yeah, those it's like Genshin Impact. So. Right. All right. Well, then I'm glad I'm glad that it's a boomer RPG then. Right, Thank exactly. You. At a certain point, I guess that's got to be my position. It's like, yeah, I guess I like what I like, and they like what I <laughs> they like. What are we gonna do? Uh, but I think there's plenty of kids who do who do appreciate Final Fantasy, and it'll be fine. Bailiff Moon says, "Hey, Nintendo, Age of Calamity was the Ew. biggest Musou game, and Three Hopes seems to do uh, very really well. How lucky do you think Koei Tecmo is working on another game? I'm sure. Man, did Three Hopes do well? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that they did." a second fire emblem muso that was a thing huh it probably did like fine it probably is like one of the best selling muso games ever still i bet so yeah yeah that yeah i'm sure that's probably fine uh ed says finally won a game of a show what are your favorite jokers i love that four card flush slash straight one um i like the one that just increases it like gives you a multiplier based on your most played hand 
Um, always very good that's for very good. that flush deck where you have just like, you know, the two kinds of cards. That's very easy. I also like DNA because it just makes doing uh, decks with three of a kinds, four of a kinds, five of a kinds very possible. Yeah, I um I like the one where if you're holding a king in your hand, you get a 1.5x multiplier. Um, I've had some fun ones. I don't think I've ever won with that one. Uh, the one I had a really good time with recently was uh, you uh, get uh, 0.5x every time you sell a card, and yeah. it resets after every big boss blind or the boss blind. So I'm like, I've never used it before until I'm like, you know what? I have this thing that if I, uh, whenever I select a blind and I skip a lot. So, but like, if you select a blind, you'll get a tarot card. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to make this work. And I just kind of got in a situ situation where I would be able to like get a tarot card every time, but I was like looking for other oppor opportunities to sell cards instead. And so by the time I got to the boss blind, that thing was usually at like seven X. And by the end of the game, I also had a bunch of other jokers and, um, and I even eventually sold that one that would give me a tarot card and was just like looking for opportunities to sell different cards. And it still worked out at the end. And that was, that worked really well. So that was a fun one. I like rolling with the punches yes. though. That's the real answer. Yeah, that's the that's the most fun. Like making making like cool decks with whatever. Yeah, making make it hay while the sun I shines. Mean, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I in the higher difficulties they give you these eternal jokers. There are jokers that you cannot destroy nor like sell. They just like stay in your board all the time. So what I did, I got this this uh, this joker that eats every other joker that you have whenever you select the blind. But with the eternal joker, you won't eat them because they can't be destroyed. So I was like having this. 20x oh. whatever see i thought i just With wouldn't the... get the buff in that case that's interesting cool. no no he always no the the the, the wording is like uh, when you select a blind it gets like 0.5 oh. x and it destroys a random joker but if your jokers can't be destroyed this thing just keeps like getting bigger and bigger and you get plus the other jokers which is like it gets like crazy and the, the 20 million Man, type deal game. it's incredible mm. All right, that's it for all those questions, Jeff. Let's take one more break. We'll get back. We'll read the rest of the super chats and not forget until the last second this time and finish up our other business here. Sounds good. I could talk about Bellatra for hours. Don't yeah. put a nickel on me, brother. <laughs> so good. I'm good whenever you are, what Mike. What are you going to do? Yeah, I just was waiting for Christian. Oh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> sorry, Mike. No, back in the hole. Ah, uh, okay. And we are back. Jeff, do we have any more Super Chats? Yeah, I was like trying to see where we left off here. We did best mini game of all time. Did we do Chrono Rig? I don't think we did. Uh, from Chrono Rig. Hey, dogs, do you think we'll get any new leaks or rumors during GDC? I just want the new Switch. Lol. If Jeff was Noah, would he have Arby's on the boat? Oh, yeah, we got to save Arby's. We got to make sure we have... Enough Arby's that they could propagate. Yeah, yeah, two of each world. sandwich. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> two of each sandwich. <laughs> I like that. Uh, what's what's the know. male version of a sandwich that has a pickle on it? I think so. There you go. Oh, great. Yeah, you're uh, welcome. Yeah. Um, when I when I get the chicken slider, they usually just use a chicken tender, so that has a bit poking out. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if we were still talking about sandwich genitals. Turns out we were. <laughs> There'll be, I mean, there'll maybe be something. There's going to be some uh, loose lips at uh, GDC, right? So we'll get, we'll hear. Yeah, something. I mean, I think the, you know, the answer to this would have been certainly had the stuff about PS5 not or PS5 Pro not already leaked. Um, that was going to leak this week, 100. percent So it kind of already did. If you're talking about Nintendo stuff, there's a chance, but um, fewer people probably know about that than would have if that thing was actually coming out this year. So maybe they'll be able to keep a lid on it. We'll see. What else? Yeah, just a second. Um, Propaganda Panda, I hope you had a good day. That's it. Thank you, Panda. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's fine. Not bad. Yeah, it was busy again, but uh, it was a good time. Um, the kids were nice. They had a good day. Uh, oh, the Bombcast was good. Yeah, Bombcast was fun. Help me beat my friend says, hey, Jeff. Hey, Mike. It's us, the Mario Jump fetish guys. We need help. All right. Is Keanu Reeves charismatic? I think so. In, a, in, in an unconventional way, yeah, it's, mind it's, you. It's the quiet charisma, right? Which is a thing. Yeah. I think he commands a room when he speaks. And it's not from uh, brashness. It's not from being loud. It's not from being unexpected. But like right. he does, like he 
talks quietly. He's, he holds his hand up in front of him to let you know he's going to talk and he's still talking and he just, he's quietly and he talks forward and people kind of get sucked into that. That's charisma. He's not the rock, but yeah, he has charisma. Yes, exactly. Uh, and not, and you don't have to be the rock to have charisma. Uh, we did Chris Quinton, but once again, thank you so much, Chris. That was thank a you, very Chris. generous super chat. Just appreciate that a ton. Uh, Big Sone says, enjoy Boston, guys. I'm excited to finally make it to a Giant Bomb panel Friday. So yeah, there's a Giant Bomb panel on, on Friday evening. I think, what time is that one, Mike? It was uh, 8 p.m.? Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's the voicemail. Or no, that, that one's Dan Doko Dare. Then Saturday is Here voicemail go. dump truck. This, I got the schedule. Thank so. you. Here, here's the whole thing, everybody. On Friday, first off, Jeff Grubb will be at the Kind of Funny Game Showdown at the Albatross Theater at 1 p.m. Jared Petty's going down. There you go. Later on Friday at 8.30 p.m., the same Albatross Theater, Dan Doko Dare Live. Me and Jeff, a bunch of other Giant Bomb people will be competing in one of Dan's wacky challenges. It's going to be very <laughs> wacky. Uh, Saturday... Uh, 3 p.m. in the Condor Theater. They're all bird themes, apparently. Uh, never been a better Beast Cast. The Beast Cast reunion is happening. I'll be Definitely there in the audience that. watching that. I'm excited about Same. that. Yes, I'll be there with Jeff. Uh, unless I have scheduled an appointment that I forgot about. And then uh, later Saturday at 7 p.m., the voicemail dump truck live uh, once again in the Albatross Theater. So there's your giant bomb. Uh, real quick, there's Mikey a correction. Uh, Dan Reichert in chat says no one said it was wacky. Okay, my bad. I just <laughs> I assumed there might be wackiness involved. I should I should not assume these things. Whimsical will be whimsical, Dan. Nah, I wouldn't. Whimsy? I would. I wouldn't count on it. Uh, I think everything I'm in has a little whimsy. That's true. It's uh, you can br you bring all the whimsy you want. Uh, Rachel Acker says, he says no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I have a Rift S. The cord is annoying, but other than that, it works just fine. Would it be silly to upgrade to a Quest Two or Three? Uh, no, it would not be silly. I think there are a lot of yeah. games that don't support the Rift anymore, right? I think there's a lot of games coming out that are just on Quest and not on Rift. At least that's my assumption. Maybe yeah. every game that's on Quest is on Rift, but I don't think so no, I mean, If you're anymore. serious about VR, I assume at some point you're going to have to upgrade to a, a Quest, but I don't, I don't know a ton about VR. Uh, the experience is just much better than it is on the Rift S. Uh, yeah, you would, you would get a lot more out of a Quest 3, I think, even a 2, for sure. Uh, Mike, I believe... Let me hit this button... Nope, there was one more below here, which was not scrolling for some reason. Nintenderic, Mike, don't forget to post on the Gaming Leaks and Forums subreddit that Jeff is, Jeff is teasing Ridge Racer. We all <laughs> know it makes it more likely to happen. Yeah, there, there yeah, you go. Yeah, that'll go for real well. That'd be that'd fantastic. Be uh, that does it for the Super Chats. Uh, hey, a quick note. I keep meaning to do this on every podcast I'm on, but because I, I forget. If you are listening to us on Google Podcasts, it's shutting down. You probably know that. But if you don't, now you do. Uh, what I would do is go to the Google Play Store, download Podcast Attic. That's my that's it's an awesome uh, like pod catcher. Use that, resubscribe to us uh, so you can keep listening. Uh, it would mean a lot if you would do that just to make sure you don't miss any episodes because that's going to start happening here pretty soon. I think that the alternative is like the YouTube podcast. The thing like that's an option that we've been doing for a long time, putting our episodes in there as podcasts means it'll show up somewhere, I think, on, like, YouTube Music or something. So there will yeah. be ways to get it through, like, other Google services. But don't – forget Google. Fuck them. Just go download Podcast Addict. There's a couple other hello, apps that people YouTube. like. Yeah, hello, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> do that instead and just uh, go ahead. And if you're looking for the RSS, you can probably just search for the show and find it that way. It's probably the best way. Uh, but we'll make sure the RSS is available in the Discord if you want to get it that way. I can't believe Google is shutting down a service. What? It's so unlike them. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, hey, hey, another note here. There will not be a game mess decides this Thursday. Jeff and I are going to be at PAX. Uh, yep. like, I don't think we're going to try to worry about trying to do some sort of remote podcast. There's a lot of other things That's happening. Right. Yeah, so sorry about that, but uh, yep, it's just going to be too busy. Yep, but we will hit you back again next week with that. And of course, uh, you know, less than 10 dogs. We'll be back next week as well. We shouldn't miss that. Right. It should be a new Columbro soon and all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah, uh, we'll make that stuff happen, too. You've been playing anything Nintendo wise, Jeff? Um, I what well, uh, God, I was I was playing something on there. I was playing a um. Oh, uh, did I talk about the Princess Peach Showtime demo? I think I talked about that last week. Yeah, right? you talked about that. Yeah. Um, I I 
kind of been just move, uh, move, like because I know we're doing the NES stuff. Been playing around some NES games. Um, oh, you're practicing. Uh, uh, well, I, I I did play some Snake Rattle and Roll, which I'm pretty sure is mm. not not on there. But just because you mentioned it, I was like, oh, well, I don't maybe know. now that I mentioned it, will be actually because I mentioned it, it almost certainly will be. Dad, is Snake Rattle and Roll gonna be one of the games? He did. He did like give me a list of the games, so because I had to like set my switch oh. up. But I've already like. Do I, I'm like not even paying sure. attention to that. I just started like playing some other stuff, but I can maybe show you what what is on there. So if you want to like get a head start, yeah. um, yeah, I am. Uh, uh, other than that, not really playing much that I could talk about yet. There's a lot of review games that are taking up my time. That's what I've been busy with. I should play some of these NES games. Uh, there's a there's a lot of NES games. I think there's more games on NES than any other stores. It's, it's very hard for us to predict. What it will be, it might be these weird sports games. It could be something like you know, just Legend of Zelda. Um, I, I am distraught because there aren't any Mega Man games just on NSO, so I will not get my way there. That's a bit of a bummer. Um, that's that's all right though. Uh, I think we'll have a a good a good competition, Jeff. And if either of our teams lose, we'll just blame our teammates. Yeah, I mean, the likely likely scenario here is it will be their fault actually. Because first, yeah. I think we go first, so I think that's how it's going to work. And also. Uh, I think but Bacalar's like not super hot on N64. Lucy keeps saying how she's never touched Nintendo stuff until it's like basically the Switch. So oh, great. Yeah. The, the, we're the, fine. It's all it's oh yeah, we're we're gonna be fine. Exactly. Fantastic. Uh but I'm looking forward to that. It's gonna be a good time. So if you're at PAX, um come to the panels. But if you also want to like just uh, come say hi, feel free to do that. I don't know where we're gonna be at any one time though. So just uh, if you see us, come holler. And if you're like, you wanna like tweet me, but hey, where are you right now? I'll let you know if there's a possibility to come hang out or something. So let me know if you're at PAX, should be fun. All right, I think that's a podcast. All right, I'm gonna hit the button. If, in fact, Jeff, I would say sometimes you simply know when you just recorded the worst podcast in history. Uh, there it is. I think uh, that was one of those times. Man, do you ever think maybe we are still in Imran Khan's dream? Podcasting for him and only him? Ooh. I thought it was for his parents. <laughs> we were at his parents' house or something. Yeah, but I think we were just re- re- recording a random podcast at his parents' house. I don't know. Right. Right. I can't think? hear the music, by the way, so you're going to have to start yelling. Yeah, why, is it, why can't I hear it? That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> they can hear it on the podcast. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There we fixed it. it. Great job. Great show we run here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a pack. Got a pack for packs. Packs pack. Packs packing. Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, God, I gotta. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. I should do the switch stuff first. That's so I don't forget that. So I'm gonna go get the switch dock, the pro controllers. Let's get that on the bag. Okay, yep, that's what I wanna do. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye. Dan. Is Dan a sissy baka? <laughs> I have to poop. It's because I hate women. God damn it.